five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome to the, I'm going to call this the pilot episode because we're amateurs as fuck and I don't think this will necessarily go to plan. So welcome to the pilot episode for The Pad, our new video game podcast. It is June 27th, 2019 and I'm joined by Cash. Hi, I'm still here apparently. <laughs> never, never get rid of him. And uh, Matty, how are you doing? Um, brilliant. And uh, we're all we're all sat, you know, talking via satellite uplink. So uh, you know, pardon the any 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 break up in the audio, but we're here to talk about video games today. So I'm, I don't know about you guys. I'm I'm in a weird situation I, I, lately, especially. I've been finding that I'm playing less and less video games, but in terms of like the number of titles, but I'm, uh, games are demanding more of my time. I think the last three or four games I've played are live service games. So uh, like I've I've kind of jumped from I'm back on Final Fantasy 14 because there's an expansion yeah. pack coming out tomorrow if uh, for early access. I've played the Division Two before then. Um, what the fuck else have I been playing? Apex Legends. I, everything yep. seems to be this never-ending treadmill of like <laughs> come play us, come play us. We've got more stuff. Uh, I mean, I, they're very different games as well, and I think this is probably one of the futures or the next generation of. Uh, the business of gaming so i think yeah. that's it's just it makes sense because if back in the day you just get what you paid for you paid 40 pound 50 pound for a game and then it's done and uh, now like that though yeah and now they realize actually we can scout these guys for a little bit more we could just add some stuff on and call it year two pass on so year one pass or season one pass season two pass and people seem to be buying it and so it seems to be working and so may it ever continue and uh, there's, there's upsides and there's downsides to it well uh, you're right um yeah, I, I I do like a good long term live service game, but when there's so many that I actually want to play, it's really hard to actually keep up with any of them. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, Apex. Of all those three, I'm playing Apex the most. I don't have Final Fantasy, don't have Division Two, um, but even trying to keep up with the seasons and hitting the um, the goals and the levels and getting all the achievements and getting all the kind of unlocks is pretty damn hard. It takes a lot of your time. Yeah, well, I mean, I bought the I bought the season one pass for Apex Legends. I played a shit ton before season one came out, and tailed off quite a bit after season one did come out. Um, and I've managed to get to level twenty around about that. And it, there's a hundred levels, and they and they've made it easier to level up over the course of the season. So yeah, I've just yeah, I don't feel like I. I'm glad I bought the season pass because I played a game enough to warrant some some money into it, but. Fuck me, did I? I didn't really get value out of the season pass beyond that kind of sentimental value of, of yeah, I, respawn. I I played regularly with this guy, and he he got full kind of season pass unlocks. But I, honestly, any time you go on the PlayStation, day or night, he would be on there playing Apex. It's got and I I couldn't I couldn't do that. There's no way I could do that. It's just not me. So well, more power to him. But that's the kind of dedication that it must take. Does it not feel like as well? I mean, with those kinds of games like Apex Legends, for example, that if you stop playing for a, a number of weeks, it's difficult to get back into. Like Apex you kind is of probably a little bit easier in that it's a very easy, kind easy of like disposable. Easy. Like you go in, you fight a little bit, you die more than likely, um, and you just hop back in. So the the biggest challenge is probably warming back up to a point where you can actually compete. Yeah, I think one yeah. or two. I think I um, stopped for a while um, for a couple of weeks. And maybe one or two games, I was kind of back into the swing of things. There wasn't too much has changed. And when you're picking, playing with randoms, you're kind of as good as they are anyway. So, And it's not so like... The, the, it's not like something like Overwatch, where the meta is constantly changing, the heroes are rebuilt and rewritten, and the abilities are tweaked. And you know, you might play a hero one season in Overwatch, and then the next season they might be utterly trash or just completely like, you know, second tier and not able to compete. It feels like Apex Legends is a little bit more like, oh, this gun's now got two less shots in it per clip. Oh, well. Yeah, um, yeah there's, there's no difference other than kind of some of the abilities for the characters and 
some work better with others and i guess the cosmetic aspect as well if you don't want to pay certain characters and you like the look of them that's really the difference and like you say there's not too much into it like you have with say overwatch or even like dota or league of legends <laughs> yeah the, the real fucking meta <laughs> in-depth fucking things yeah um not that i i, I can't really talk too much about mobas mobas are not something i've ever really been able to get into um but so so is, is apex what you've been playing mainly uh, so I've been playing uh, recently quite a bit of Apex Legends. Uh, I kind of stopped recently. Uh, for some reason, I've got back into No Man's Sky uh, yeah, because they, they've they been and they've announced for the VR on the PlayStation VR as well, um, an update to No Man's Sky in that it will be absolutely everything. It won't be kind of like a demo version or a watered-down version. It'll be absolutely everything in the VR. And if, even when I got... Um, no Man's Sky originally, I thought, oh, this would be amazing, like virtual reality, and to kind of have that opportunity to have that wish granted is is pretty good. Um, well, and they've they updated that game a shit ton, like since like launch or since the first year. Yeah, it's, like, they've continued to update it. Yeah, it's it's never ending. There isn't kind of a win state. You just kind of hit a galaxy and then you get to an next galaxy, and it's forever looping. And they're always changing content and update. It's almost like um, your Stardew Valleys or your Minecraft. It's, 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 or your Terrarias even, there's always mm-hmm. something going on, there's always kind of something new. Uh, the core mechanics of it are kind of the same, but you can always kind of put your little piece on the back of it as well. Um, so I've been playing into that, I've, I've, I've liked the changes. Um, it's such a different game to when we got on release. I remember you, me, and was it Simon, Ben? Um, oh God, yeah, sitting in a party chat, not playing together because the multiplayer didn't exist. <laughs> Yeah, that that great big white lie that they told us. Um, and then I remember, kind of, we all went pretty stale off it pretty soon after that. And um, I knew that they kind of released chapters and released updates and patches. And people online seem to have forgiven it. If you look at the Steam uh, review score now, it's way more positive. And that's that almost never happens. I can't. Remember. It's incredible, kind of the turnaround that they've done. So um, yeah, I've been playing a lot of that. It makes me wonder as well, because Hello Games, the developers, uh, as to when and how the next game will come out, because on one hand, you'll have a lot of uh, bitterness and negativity around the launch of No Man's Sky and the, the sense of betrayal that people had. But at the same time, you have the goodwill earned by uh, the updates and the constant. I, uh, I think the, the bitterness mm-hmm. that you mentioned in there, mate, is probably it's probably been superseded by the goodwill at this point. Like, I, I, really? anybody, I like to think so. anybody who's still playing No Man's Sky is play, it, it seems to have a very positive opinion. Like, and as you said, like like you just mentioned there, cash and and the fact that it's dragging all players like yourself back in. I don't see anybody still sitting there kind of bitching about it, saying, "Well, it was shit when it launched." It's usually a case of, "Yeah, it was it was shit when it's launched. It wasn't worth the price of admission. It was way it was way over promised and under delivered in like a in a fucking Peter Molyneux esque fashion." <laughs> oh God, yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, it, it, you know, to be fair to them, they stuck with it. They've turned it around. I, I, not that I've played it since about that first kind of two month launch window, but for all intents and purposes, it seems like they've pretty much delivered on what they promised, and then a little bit more. Yeah, kind of weird I'd, I'd say it's pretty much there. You've got um, multiplayer support now. You've got third party cameras, uh, third person cameras. Sorry for yourself and for your ship. Um, you've got kind of fleet management, um, and yeah, there's a whole lot more the vehicles uh, underwater as well. So it's almost like. Uh, Subnautica, well, it's probably not nearly as deep as Subnautica, but it's got a kind of a, that feel to it as well. You've got a much more diverse biomes, much more diverse kind of life as well. They've rejigged a lot of it. They've had to reset the universe, quote unquote, a few times as well to kind of deal with the changes. So it's, yeah, it's a long time coming, but it's finally got there. It's, it's good. Like, like you see, Cash, there's not many success stories um, like that where people will stick with it. Um, the only other one that really comes to mind immediately is probably Final Fantasy XIV, which is when I'm... Yeah, which moment. is... Gosh, um, I can remember that came out, and it was just panned, and then... Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> I, like, I, I, mean, saying, I just, I'm just saying think... it's terrible, but I never played it. Um, I, I honestly thought that was going to be it for Final Fantasy and maybe part of Square, because they invested so much into it. And you see, I mean, this is an MMO. This isn't something you can just put away and patch and it'll be absolutely fine this is from the ground up an mmo and i was yeah. thinking how are they ever going to fix this but yeah well, as well, but they, they had the incentive to like improve it because they were getting you know monthly payments from potential customers whereas no man's sky was a bit different in the sense that it sold 
a shit ton at launch. Um, I can't imagine the sales for it since have been amazing, but they're, they're still, you know. I think uh, they've been okay because it, it launched on PC, but you, you, you're right, Matty. It'll be that initial launch window because they're not, there's not, there's not like a subscription fee for it because, well, subscription fees are kind of a, an oddity these days. Um, yeah. Is there paid DLC? I get the impression this is all no. free. No, it's all free. I would say probably it's, think of it as like an investment. Um, going back on what Matty said, if they were to release another game after the shambles of No Man's Sky, they probably wouldn't have got very far. Um, but they've yeah. kind of redeemed themselves. They've got the uh, confidence of the community back. Um, and well, you say that, that, that'll but probably help them in the future. You say that, but like the EA and Activision have mega hits every year. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that the, the, the gaming community, as, it, as such as it is, is pretty fickle. And, and probably oh, made yeah. up of the majority of people who aren't really part of the gaming community, to be honest, who don't give a shit about any of this. But no, it, it, is, it, is, it is good. Um, so yeah, I've been playing that. I've been playing Apex. And uh, recently I downloaded uh, or I bought uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, the... Um, Oh, that released a couple of years ago. You just are you getting ready for Breakpoint? I'm gonna say. Um, I'd like to say yeah, but I think I I always wanted to get Wildlands, but I didn't want to get it at like the thirty forty pound price tag. Uh, and it was down to about eighteen quid with the year two season pass. I thought, well, yeah. Uh, I remember playing the demo, and I actually thought the demo was really good. But it's one of those games where I thought it, it needs other people because it's like a squad game, and there wasn't anyone I knew that had um, Ghost Recon Wildlands. So I thought I. The most loneliest game in the world, in it with me and three bots <laughs> taking over uh, Bolivia. So I didn't really do it, but now it's cheap. Now I can just waste my time, spend ten minutes here, an hour there. Perfect. It's funny you say that because uh, a guy I work with, um, he he basically had that as one of his like favorite games of the last few years. But he says the only reason he enjoyed it at all it was because he had a squad of like him and three other friends who all were obsessed with going in and being legitimately stealthy and taking it like a proper squad. And yeah. playing on the highest difficulty and just going for it like proper role playing it. And I can imagine. It I, 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 if you get really deep into it, I, it would be like that. But so, if there's anyone listening and they want to join me, please cash me one with my PSN gamer tag. Be more than happy to uh, give that a whirl. But yeah, I can absolutely imagine that's the um, the appeal of it. Cool. So, Matty, what have you been playing? Not oh, jeez, don't ask. Um, I've been looking forward to this because I I thought you might have said like oh well I've um I've bought like I don't know a NES uh, a <laughs> and I've been playing through like I don't know I guess I don't even know uh, Ghostbusters. Near enough, the last game I, the last game I, I completed this week was um, Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube the original. Oh, that, that's what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> not that Luigi Mansion. It was gonna but... happen. It was gonna happen. You just went too far back then. That's all it was. <laughs> it's I have I haven't completed it since it came out, which is what. 18, 17, 18 years back now. Um, <laughs> Fucking hell, don't say oh that, man. God. Yeah, it's a good thing as well. Um, but I just, I saw that trailer at D3 for the new Luigi's Mansion and um, kind of brought back a lot of nostalgia. So I thought, well, see how the game holds up. Do it, um, yeah, you got to do it for all time's sake, absolutely. And does it yeah, hold up? Yeah, uh, the, the controls don't. Um it's kind of weird because you're not controlling just Luigi, but you're also controlling his, like, uh, what do you call it? The his Hoover? bloody Ghostbusters thing. <laughs> the um, Hoover, basically, yeah. The Hoover, yeah. The Hoover, yeah or something? The 3D is done in such a way that the, the biggest problem I have with it is I can't... It's difficult to decipher whether objects are ahead or behind you when you're trying to Hoover them up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, um... I found myself getting frustrated quite a lot, but no, I, it, it's a strange thing about the GameCube is the graphics hold up really well. I think Nintendo do that in general. They they go for quite a um like a, a, a squashy, plushy, rounded yeah, art style. Really sort of, yeah, it's 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 it holds up really well. It it's not too ambitious in terms of what it's going for. It's like a small mansion itself, but um yeah, it's. GameCube was a little underestimated in terms of what it could do. I mean, it was, it, you know, it, it, of that generation, the PlayStation 2, which was the clear winner and still, you know, yeah. just, I'm pretty sure it still holds records today for numbers sold. But um, that was the weakest console by quite a margin. The GameCube was significantly more powerful and then the Xbox yeah. original it was, was more it powerful was again. 
It was Nintendo's last console where they were trying to compete in terms of yeah on the power playing field. Yeah, and you and can it, see why they never did it again because the GameCube was a, a, a commercial failure. I'm going to say yeah, that might sound harsh, it, but it was a fantastic piece of hardware. It just uh, like you say, commercially, it didn't it didn't do much for them. They then changed direction and say we're going to make this sort of uh, underpowered motion gimmicky using thing, <laughs> and and it sells That's, a shit ton. My so, God, yeah. it was the revolution. That's what it was. It was. That's what they went uh, for. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, insane. Man. I remember seeing that E three and just thinking, oh my gosh. I remember seeing I'm the first the... picture of the Wii, and and before I knew what it was, and I thought, oh shit, the PS three looks mint because it just looked like <laughs> a, 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 an evolved PlayStation two. Like it looked like it a, just looked a, like a sleeker, whiter PS two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was black ones announced at the same time, so I the first one ah, okay. black, so the black ones. Okay, okay, that makes I sense. I thought, oh, that PS3 looks pretty good. Um, <laughs> it's nice and sleek, and yep. I, this pitch had no like scale, so for I didn't know I how know. small it actually would be. I know. Plus, we say gimmicky, and uh, Sony and Microsoft both copied them well into this generation as well with the uh, Move and the Connect controller. Yeah. So they definitely tried oh, to capitalize on the uh, Nintendo thing, I but I, I mean, it's yeah, it's if anyone yeah. can do it, Nintendo can do it. Um, but like I say, going back to the GameCube, surprising how well it kind of holds up, even like on an HD TV. So yeah, completed that, um, and more down my shitty rabbit hole. <laughs> it's it's cool funny though, you see, you completed that as if like, oh fuck it, I just wasted <laughs> my time playing that. Yeah, yeah. Who plays games for fun anyway? <laughs> Uh, speaking of fun, I also on the Wii U had on the Virtual Console had the um er, well how do I call this the original New Super Mario Brothers game for the DS. Is that the um, one that's just been re 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 released for the Switch as the New yeah, that, Super Mario that, Brothers? That was, that was the Wii U version, which is called New Super Mario Brothers Wii U Deluxe. Oh, I think I, I think I know which one you mean, Matty. It's there wasn't any multiplayer on there, was there? It was just literally you and Mario or Luigi. Or... It, was, it was the very first um, sort of like new two D, three D. Yeah, it was the first return to that format, um, which especially back then was was kind of incredible, you know. But um, is that isn't that meant to be go- the good one though? No, I said the good one was the Wii U one, believe it or not. Oh, okay. It's just the formula kind of went very still by that point. Because but... I remember that there was one that came out in the DS which was not meant to be very good, but is that not 3D World that I'm thinking of? You're thinking of 3DS movies, you're thinking of 3D World? No, there was New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS, which I haven't played, so... Okay, I don't know which one I'm talking about, I so I probably didn't. shouldn't comment. <laughs> <laughs> other, than, right, other than those two majestic games, um, I've just started playing Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. Um, oh yeah, the uh, the Greek one. Yeah, well, because I I got a platinum in Origins last year. Oh wow, gosh, fucking yeah. hell! And you thought, oh, I'd like more. Oh, how long did that take you? I, I kind of thought, well, there's no fucking way I'm doing that again. And then <laughs> here we are. Here we go. Here we go. It's it's you, you talk about games being fun. It's a, it's a really enjoyable <laughs> game. With the, my kind of obsessive behavior kicks in, and then it's that's, just a that's how they get you, Matty. It's all the achievements yeah, and the trophies. I'm that's that's how they get everything off on the on the map, and it's going to take me dozens and dozens of hours at least. You know, I refuse to get a, a platinum or all the achievements on Assassin's Creed anymore. I um, I was almost there. I think it was on ninety seven percent on Assassin's Creed two, and my PlayStation three oh. brick. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I was like, I was like. Fuck Petruccio, man. He can get his own fucking feathers. I just never do it again. I actually did oh, to get them in the Assassin's Creed I'm... 2 and PlayStation 3 as well. That's the never. other game I got. See, it, it was... It was actually 2 was one of the good ones in that you just played the yeah. game, you had fun, and you realised you were almost there with the achievements. And yeah. the other stuff was, was never hidden. It was always really easy, and uh, I think it was only the feathers that were hidden, but there was kind of enough guys online. And I just thought, you know what? I could give myself an hour or two, and I could have this done, no problem. <laughs> Trust me, the new ones don't. Famous last to. word. Famous <laughs> last fucking word. Well, I've, I've heard that the, the biggest issue with the, um, especially Odyssey. I, I get the impression Origins takes a while to get going, but once it does, it's it's pretty good and it is mm. a nice chunk of game. And and it was a new style of Assassin's Creed, so the novelty was there. I, yeah, the, the, like, the impression it, it, I get with. Go on. Sorry, I was going to say the impression I get with Odyssey is that it's more of that 
with characters that aren't quite as interesting, a story that's not quite as interesting, but just more of all that window dressing. And as you say, that map full of icons and collectibles. And yeah. the biggest complaint I've I mean, heard about it is you almost need to do everything in order to progress and get through the story. And it, it's too much game. It's like... It is. It's overwhelming, but it's it's kind of... Once you get going on it, it's it's really satisfying. Um, I, I think it's a weird combination of like the gameplay is very much, or the combat is kind of block rules inspired. Um, but the the world itself is actually really impressive, or at least it was in Origins. The original. Yeah, I've heard the settings on the last two games have have been fantastic, and they've done it kind of really well. I mean, Origins was brilliant because it was Egypt, so you were um you were going into pyramids and all sorts. But I'm only about ten hours into um, Odyssey so far. That's when the tutorial. <laughs> well, at the rate I'm going, because I'm again, I'm taking everything off on the map, so I, this is going to take me for. But um... I mean that, that that seems to be kind of the the mo of the Ubisoft open world game in that they are good but not great, but there's a shit ton of them, and because they're still <laughs> good, they kind of tease you along. I think, well, I think to be fair, I think Origin, the system or the engine they're using for the Origins and for the for this game, the new one, Odyssey, um, they are a definite change or improvement as far as I'm concerned over what Assassin's Creed was. Oh, yeah, um, that's, what, that's what I've heard. I mean, it seems like it's more akin to something like The Witcher than it is the yeah, old. I hear people compare that quite a lot. And I mean, obviously, you know, um, it's... I think a lot of people are off-put by the Assassin's Creed name, whereas if you actually go and play the last year uh, game or this one, you might be surprised. It is actually quite fun. I mean, it was good enough for me to get a platinum. I, I want to get it on my PC. Um, I don't think I got on the PlayStation 4, but it's still like 18 quid. Is it worth it at that price? Uh, no. Um, I mean, well... What was that? Eighteen. It's yeah. It's like I think it's Steve still now. It's like sixteen ninety nine or seventeen ninety nine. I'm so thinking. Wait, wait, wait. Which are you talking about? The new one or the, or the last year's one? Uh, Origins. Oh, Origins. Yeah, I'd, I'd still say go for that. That price. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, I'd say if you're but, interested, anything around the fifteen pound mark seems fair for a game that big and uh, yeah, it is production big. It, it, value. It, it, the game kind of encourages you to kind of do these side missions. So a lot of the complaints that the game was, you know. That you need to do the side missions to progress. It's kind of, kind of no because it, it's not about rushing through it. You know what I mean? Um, you only run into that problem if you skip a lot of the side quests. Fair enough. But, um, yeah, it, it's fun. I don't think there's one coming this year, though, is there? So no, I, I think uh, Origins and Odyssey they came out year after year, didn't they? It's like one a year after yeah, year. Yeah, that, that's why I didn't get Odyssey anywhere near launch because I thought. No. What are, they, are they still not launching DLC for Odyssey? Didn't they just release no, Atlant- like an ex- Atlantis expansion pack? Yeah, they do DLCs. I didn't. I didn't get get any of the DLC for Origins because I was kind of burnt out. But oh my god, I can imagine doing all the achievements and then <laughs> hey, hey, here's a good idea: pay some money and do some more. Fuck, yeah. do some more lists. Go and complete them. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's a chore, but it's fun. It's fun chore. So I imagine yeah. with all your time taken up with, with these mammoth fucking Assassin's Creed games, that is that rounded <laughs> out what you've been playing lately? Pretty much. I just speaking of what we were talking about earlier, I just started playing uh, Apex Legends again for the first time in about about two or three months. Um, yeah, maybe it's a bit less. Than... Um, Gotta get back on it, man. I don't know. I, I, on my Xbox, I got my character to like level seventy something. Fuck me! I thought I'd oh, play wow. like. A lot. Yeah, I, I was hooked. That's just, I think I'm about 75, so yeah, you put some hours in, man. Yeah, um, so going back to it now, it's kind of like, oh, this is way too familiar. Um, well, we might have some news about that later. Well, yeah, yeah, you've come to the right yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing segues, just really clumsy ones that are about 20 <laughs> minutes apart. From... <laughs> um, but yeah, um, okay. So Apex Legends, so you, you're burning out quickly. Sorry, that was to you, Matt. Are you. Have you burned out quickly on Apex already? Um, it just it just feels like it's. I kind of burnt myself out back when I played it, and I didn't. Let me guess what you're saying, mate. You, you you team up, you get randoms. They're speaking 
French or German, some other shit. You launch yeah. from the pad, and it's the same old stuff. It's like, should we go pit? Should we go school town? Should we go to that forest that's burnt out that nobody likes? You just think, nah, this is the same stuff, isn't it? It gets it gets bad to the point that like <laughs> you project like, you, kind of, you know every yeah. single you know the way every game will play out. You know, what, like, like, well, well, well have we got some good news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my my favorite thing while we're talking about AVEX Legends because I'm I'm still dipping in and out. My um friend John, you guys have both met John. Um, yeah, he's he doesn't play a lot of games, but when he like he he tends to he tends to play single player games, generally fairly story oriented things. Like um, yeah, I think he, t- he tends to get through like one maybe two games a year. Uh, I think God of War was so the game very played. very kind of casual. Yeah, you know, he, I, I don't he, mean that as a piss take. I'm just saying, like, generally. No, he, he is, like, and he, he fully holds his hands up, even in that kind of piss takey way. Um, but he's he's really got an Apex Legends because it's it's so pick up and play. He can just hop on whenever he gets a chance and, and play it. Um, so I've been playing a little bit with him, and he he's really into it. And I think uh, more lately, when I've been playing, it's 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 been me and him playing um, when he's online, and me getting very frustrated. Uh, that's good. I think that's part of it as well. He'll, he'll, it's like we're saying with. Um... Ghost Recon, you'll enjoy that much more if you've got friends, especially people that you uh, know playing with I don't you. think I do. I don't think I do, Cash. Um, uh, I feel like uh, I need to be carried to get anywhere, and Don is not capable of carrying anybody on that game. <laughs> uh, so I, I get very frustrated. I uh, tried, John. I tried. So, yeah, I think so. I've been playing a little bit of Apex Legends. I mentioned before, I'm, I'm playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV. Again, um, Shadowbringers is out tomorrow. So I was thinking about taking the day off, you know, but then I realized it's never more and the servers are going to fucking crash. The last DLC I heard was Heaven Sword. And then wasn't there one, what was the one after that? Or was that the last one? Uh, so yeah, the, the, so we, we talked about a little bit before how um, Final Fantasy XIV came out. It was a fucking disaster. So they, they kicked out the old directors, got in uh, Yoshi P, who's still the director today. And he turned the game around. He basically rebuilt it. Um, and they, they, they basically built this relaunch into the story mode, into the story. Yeah. So like it's really, really clever how they did that. Yeah, like the world comes to an end at the end of the uh, the one point cycle, and then the game relaunched as a Realm Reborn, which was two point which is effectively just redoing the game in a way that fucking worked. Um, and then they did Heaven's Ward, which is the first expansion pack, and that's it. Feels like Realm Reborn was very much just a case of getting shit together and making it playable, and giving them some kind of progression and arc and tools that they could work with and designs that they could work with. And it's it's fine. It's definitely the the roughest part of the game now because it's about five year old. The trouble is, it's it's the first thing people hit when you invite new players into the game, and it's a real fucking hill to climb to get new players invested. Um, Heaven's Ward's really good. Um, Heaven's Ward, generally the, the cycle seems to be you get a, an expansion pack and then you get about five patches worth of content over two years to round out the story of that expansion pack and lead into oh, the yeah. next. And he, the, the, the Heaven's Ward expansion and its patches, the story in that is like up there with mainline Final Fantasy games. It is fucking awesome. It's, it's really, really good. Um, like the patches, especially when it, it kind of comes to the climax of the Heaven's Ward storyline, it's it's really really good it's big um, it's kind of blockbuster climactic all that yeah i mean heaven's world's basically about this um secluded city state that has isolated itself from everybody else because it's locked in this like 500 year war against these dragons and it's all about like this corrupt fucking church that runs it and these dragons who are malevolent on the surface but actually might be the party that's been wronged um and it's it's kind of like this really deep philosophical story about like um how like hatred runs deep across generations and wow. uh, the truth's twisted over time and it, it's it's quite it's really fucking good um and then stormblood which is kind of the one we're in now it's just finished um was like this it's kind of about like um this em- empire that's always like a background villain um and and city states it's it's suppressed rising up in rebellion and you kind of joining in 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 kind of leading these rebellions and, and trying to break their the, the empire's stranglehold um and this new one is like some high fantasy shit where you go into an alternate version of the world you're in to essentially turn on your masters because they've actually been doing some bad shit in another place <laughs> in another um, dimension it kind of it kind of turns out that you might not have been the the good guy after all and you might have caused some shit that's reverberated across other places and you've got to go and sort it out um 
that's me very paraphrasing but generally it, it's it's i've been playing a lot of that uh, getting back into it getting prepared for the new expansion pack um and i'm really enjoying it it's it's good it's very much an mmo but it possibly is the best mmo on the market at the moment because it feels like warcraft is at an all-time low in terms of popularity uh I know Battle for Azeroth has not been kind to that game or its player base, so people seem to be jumping ship. And one thing I've definitely noticed over the last couple of weeks when I've been playing, there is a shit ton of new players on Final Fantasy XIV, like a shit ton, because I've had to explain fight mechanics to so many people, <laughs> which has not, like, I think I've, uh, since since Stormblood came out two years ago, um, I, I, people just seem to know what they were doing, and the last kind of month has just been... It's just been a big change. Oh, that's good. Remember, good. Ben, you were a new one. Yeah, yeah, probably still am to be honest. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there. So that that's that's that, that's a time sink of a fucking game, Jesus. Um, but it's it's good. I'm enjoying it. Uh, dipping into Apex, like I said. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. I've Has anyone finished... paid like uh, forty quid for a brand new game recently? Because I, I haven't. I think the last game I bought. Um, God, I can't even remember what it was actually. Uh, it, must be, it must have been last year. I don't think it was this year. Oh no, it was Devil May Cry Five. That's the last game I bought, and that was February or March. Uh, Shadowbringers, the expansion packs, the, the last game I bought like three days ago. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, I'm dipping in and out of Final Fantasy Twelve. I've never played it. It's on the Switch. I took it to Japan with me to play on the plane. Oh, I love Final Fantasy Twelve. It's. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's good. I um, it, it took me a while to get into. I think early game was a bit of a fucking learning curve, but I, um, I really enjoyed I, the story from the off. I was like, "Oh shit, this is throwing me into something." Um, but that yeah, the gameplay is a little bit basic. Yeah, I I, did, I like the gambit system actually that you can mm-hmm. kind of tune and uh, many characters and stuff. Um, I kind of went into that. Final Fantasy Ten was like my first Final Fantasy game that I played from start to finish. Absolutely fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. I'd yeah. get the same experience with 12 and I didn't, but that's not a bad thing because I did like 12 for it was. Um, it's, it's very different. It, it's yeah. What, what I quite like about it is as somebody who is no longer an angsty teen, um, I, I, feel, I feel like Final Fantasy uh, protagonists are often uh, you know angsty teens that I really just don't like anymore. Oh, yeah, they are. I, um, I'm trying to think of when there wasn't one. I, think I suppose Titus jealous. isn't really angsty, but he's still an annoying teen. Uh, he's got daddy issues, man. If he, if he was a, a girl, it'd be a completely different kind of game. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it would involve a black couch in a back room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, so 12 is quite good in that, like, it's more like a political story with an ensemble yeah. cast. Like I think part of the issue is I was reading about this where it was written about four times or three times with different characters as the focus. Uh, once it was written with Princess Ash as the the main character, and mm. she's she is like the backbone. She's like this chosen one who's going to reunite the kingdom, but she's not really the main character in the final game. Uh, then there's um, Captain Bash, who's like this disgraced soldier, and apparently it was written uh, from his point of view originally, and then they decided Japanese audiences will not relate to an older, grizzled character, so they then brought in Van and Pinello into the forefront, who are like the plucky teenage street urchins, and they made them the main characters, basically, because apparently that would appeal to people more. I so guess it the... worked. I guess it worked. Well, they're the main characters, but they then they're kind of just along for the ride. Um, yeah, they are clearly. They've they've got no stake really in other than oh, these guys have taken over our t- our city. I mean, the zoo is going to be a little bit different now. That's yeah, that's yeah, pretty much yeah. it. I mean, Princess Ash has like lost her kingdom. Bash, like you say, disgraced soldier. Even uh, um, uh, Baltier uh, and uh, Fran. Uh, they're, they're awesome. I really yeah, like I love them. I like the characters. It's such weird combos like to put together, like some rabbit girl and some. Kind of um, <laughs> aristocratic Englishman. It's just weird. You know, the guy, I, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy who does Balthier's voice, he's in fucking everything and he's got one voice. That's yeah. his voice. He, yeah, yeah, that, that you can recognize it. There's so many games I've played. I was like, oh, hi, Balthier. See you again. <laughs> just so you're still employed, you're not on the dole or anything. Yeah, he's a steady stream of fucking employment because he's the Crusader in Diablo 3. Fucking hell, he was, a, he was a, one of the main characters in Final Fantasy 14 for a bit until they recast everybody in the first expansion pack. Um, he's in. He's played two separate characters in Destiny and Destiny Two. Um, he just pops up fucking everywhere, and it's that same kind of like clipped English posh voice. <laughs> um, and it's now it's almost like a meme. Now it's like it's my own personal meme. It just he pops up everywhere, and it's like oh yeah, it's him again. Um, 
So yeah, I'm, I'm dipping in and out of Final Fantasy XII. I'm kind of starting to do that thing I do with JRPGs where I hit the 25 hour mark and just tail right off. Um, and I don't want to because I'm really enjoying it, but I'm, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm even though it's on the Switch and I can take it wherever I go, I'm, start, I'm finding it hard to find the time to play it enough. Um, I, th I think what I remember doing was, uh, like you, I remember getting, I don't know what level you are, but it was about level 30 or 40. I remember hitting just like a wall. I just think this is taking it out of me. But I remember doing the uh, side stuff and getting the other espers and unlocking stuff on the license board. and I was enjoying that. And then by the time I finished all that, I was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm ready to finish the story now. So I, that's what I recall <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so th I'm, I'm enjoying that well enough. Um, and uh, just struggling to find the time to play it. And something else I've picked up uh, is Trova Saves the Universe, which is um, oh. an idea of a VR game, but it's from Justin Roiland of Rick and Morty fame. And the best way I can describe it is it's a platformer game in VR. Although you can play it, as I say, in 2D, it's fine. It's far better in VR, though, because the game interacts with you in such a way that VR is beneficial. But it's basically, you seen. I know you have cash, but may you ever seen Rick and Morty? Uh, no, I know of it. I've never seen it. Well, it, it's basically, and cash, you'll get the reference, but it's intergalactic, interdimensional TV, inter interdimensional cable. Intergalactic cable, yeah. It, it's basically that, the game. It's just like oh. random sequences strung together via vague plot. It sounds like uh, you play Counting Plus, because Counting Plus was like that as well. Yeah, it's that it's a kind of rambling, nonsensical humor where, like, if you if you do not like that humor, this game will be terrible because at best it's like a, a reasonably functional platformer. It's, he, it's 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 really odd because I really liked Accounting Plus um, and like actually. the different stories and stuff. And, like, there's times where I would just my sides would be hurting because I was just laughing that hard, but then I'd get. Um, someone I knew to try it out, and they just didn't seem to have the same appreciation as I did. So I was like, mm, maybe it's just I've got a really weird sense of humor or something. But yeah, I, I heard about this, um, and I heard that it was going to be VR as well, so I'm glad it's kind of transitioned well. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I'm only halfway through it, um, I think. But like, it's just, it's just it's, it's fucking stupid, man. Like, you're basically going from planet to planet to get different items to progress in the story and all that. And and like the last planet I was at was like, we need to go and see this guy called something like Doopy Doopers. And it's just this weird little abstract character that sits in a wheelchair and you're kind of walking along the, um, the, the planet and you'll find two houses next to each other. And he'll be sitting on, on like in his wheelchair outside of one of the houses. And he's got his, like, he's packed up as if he's moving. And he's like he's moving house to the next door one, and he wants you to move all his boxes and stuff. And he's, it's like you've got to get something from him. I can't, I can't really remember what. And he'll say, "Oh yeah, that's no problem." But could you just do me a favor and just move some of these boxes? And he like plays on the fact that he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> and it's like he's like one of those people who like he'll he'll ask if you for you to do a favor, and then kind of take the piss with how far he's taking it. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. And it, it and it's like it, it it like tests your patience before you just start like smacking them or just trying to bypass the puzzle <laughs> yourself or whatever. God. And it, it's like, oh, can you can you move my uh, mattress? It's got a, oh, it's I can't remember what it is. He's, he asked you to move something really specific, and it's like, oh, you need to put it on the roof. That's where it needs to go. And the roof's like slanted, and there's no way you can balance this fucking thing on the roof. And he keeps complaining when it falls off. <laughs> He just prods and pokes you until you snap, basically. And then, like, if you walk away from him, he's like, oh, that's not very nice. Walking away from a man in a wheelchair. <laughs> you're a real piece of work, you know that? And he just... <laughs> it's just like... Yeah, it sounds, it sounds exactly like a Carnegie Plus, so... Um, yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to just try and get it, say it for myself. Yeah, it's, I mean, I don't want to kind of say what goes on in Carnegie Plus, but if you get it, it's just... You, you'll have a good time with it and the, the less you know about it the better because everything will surprise you then oh yeah it's, it's good i, I have platinum just counting plus like i had to play through it about three times did you but, oh yeah. God. i think i went for it and then i just got really annoyed with it and i haven't kind of tried it again <laughs> it's not too bad there's some weird shit in it that you have to like you have to know what you're doing going in um yeah yeah i think it's uh they kept saying you have to kind of know i think like in three or four runs you could probably do it and i've done maybe two so you kind of do it again. There's some parts which are just time consuming because of the type of game it is where things are basically just playing out in front of you and you've kind of just got to interact with them as they trigger certain events. Like you can't skip through them basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly.
the, the the trophy that takes the longest is the one where you've got to um, exhaust all dialogue options at a certain oh, part of the game. Oh, the, uh, the guy in behind the door. Yep, and it takes like literally something like 20 minutes of you just knocking on the door, listening to a line, knocking again, listening again. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's wearing. But, uh, you know, platinum trophies, always worth it. Hey, well, I'm glad there's another PSVR game worth getting. I think the last two games I got for the VR, it was in, um, it must have been like a spring sale or something, but it was uh, super hot. I got the regular and the oh, VR so edition. Good. So good in VR. Uh, oh, it's, it's amazing. Um, and I got um, Rocky, uh, well, well, it's not Rocky, it's a Creed, um, Rise Creed. of Legend. How is that? Uh, I, I really like it, you know. It's, it's, it's just an arcade game. Like, don't kind of go into it thinking it's going to be a realistic game. But it's, it's really true to kind of the source material. It's got the soundtrack. It's got as close to the voices as you can get. I don't, I'm not sure if it's the actual voices. Um, and it's got, like, a career mode, which kind of takes you through, like, the first uh, movie. Um, and it's got kind of the characters in there from most of the films. Um, it's got I the training montages it. as well. It's yeah, it's it's a lot of fun and it's a good workout as well. I've I've played for like I remember doing it when I was fasting, um, just to kind of pass time. <laughs> and I was out. like, oh, this this was just past time. And like fifteen minutes later, I was sweating. Like the PSVR was dripping. I was like, holy moly, this is way more intense than kind of it feels like. It's almost like um, beat saving that you don't really know you're doing a workout until you kind of take everything off, and it's like, yes. Yeah, that's my sweat. That's covering the lens now. <laughs> Just ruined my headset. <laughs> exactly. So I, I, yeah, I'll probably pick up uh, Trover um, later on down the line. I think I bought it when it first came out, and it's about twenty-five quid retail. I'd, I'd definitely recommend getting it at a bit cheaper. Um, but if you enjoy that type of game, you know you'll you'll get you'll get value out of it. It's fine. Um, so Great. kind of beyond that, I've I'm probably rounded up what I'm mainly playing. Oh no, sorry, I've got one more thing. Um, no. Probably the most important thing. Uh, I played the uh, Monster Hunter Iceborne beta at the weekend. Oh, nice! I I didn't realize there was one. Uh, How yeah, was it? so it it's it's more Monster Hunter World, so it's fucking great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think so, that means you definitely get an Iceborne then. Oh, so much so! Like I'm I'm <laughs> I, I'm so excited for Iceborne. Which it's means unreal. which means I'm gonna get it as well. Fuck you know. <laughs> so the the beta came out on Friday, uh, last Friday for PS Plus users and it ran over the weekend and then i think the open betas maybe it might be finished now but it was running this week or maybe even this weekend i don't know the details um but you know check it check your platform and see if it's there because it's it's probably worth playing so it's um the beta was three fights one of them was just against a great jagras in the um, ancient forest so basically yeah uh, hey if you've never played monster in the world before try this this is the starter fight um then the second fight was in the new snowy area against one of the new monsters which uh, is the big, um, like, moose-looking Tyrannosaurus, like, T-Rex thing. Is this the brand spiky new monster? It's not been in any of the previous ones, though. Yeah, so it, it's, like, it's got moose horns. It's, like, a T-Rex-looking thing, a brute wyvern, as they're called in the game. And it charges you, and its horns scoop up, like, the environment around it. So if it crashes into a tree, the tree will be scooped up in its horns, and it's all of a sudden, like, doubled the length of its uh, charge, like, the width oh of its charge. God. Or it has rocks, so it hits you twice as hard. It's like a mid-tier monster, but it's cool. And then the um, the kind of challenging fight in the beta was against uh, Tigrex or Tigrex or however you pronounce it. There seems to be there's a big debate in the monster community at the moment. <laughs> um, and, and Tigrex is one of my favorite monsters. He's a he's a, a signature from like the the second generation of Monster Hunter games. He's a signature monster, which means he, he popped up on the box art for that generation. Um, and he's just he is a tiger mixed with a T-Rex mixed with a dragon. Um, oh my God. and he's just the angriest <laughs> motherfucker on the planet. He just runs at you with his big fucking jaw and snaps and like smashes you. And he's just hyper aggressive. And if you try to drink a portion, he'll just look at you and leap across the arena at you. Um, and he's been in previous games, hence why I know, know a little bit about him, um, that I've played like, so four and generations and things like that. And Having brought having him brought into world, he's just like a perfect port. He moves the same, he acts the same. It's it's, it's like bigger, awesome. badder, and better now. He just looks amazing. Like there's so much detail on that model. Um, it's unreal, and it was he, he was hard. Like in the beta, you want to get 20 minutes to fight the uh, monsters, and the first time we fought him, um, we didn't do it. We were about to kill him, and we ran out of time. The second time, we managed it. 
but it was uh, it was a hell of a fight. It was good. Great. I mean, the new area looks amazing as well. Um, snow effects look fantastic. You're wading through like waist deep snow that slows you down. Um, there's one bit where we were fighting Tigrex on a cliffside, and half the cliffside collapsed like an ice sheet and fell into the lower area. Um, oh, seems- okay, so like environmental hazard. Yeah, there's little hot springs where these little monkey things hang around to warm up. And you, if you crouch in the hot springs, it warms you up and heals you. Um, yeah, it, it it looks very promising. And I think the thing that's got me most excited about Iceborne is not only it's more Monster Hunter, which is always a fucking great thing, especially how good World was. Um, so the, the first trailer they announced for Iceborne, it showed you the new signature monster, which is an ice dragon called Valkana, which looks pretty impressive. And they also showed the return of a monster called Naga Cougar, which is basically a cougar crossed with a dragon. Um, <laughs> that, that throws spikes at you. Um, it's really fast, really aggressive, really cool monster. Um, so that, that was like, hey, we're bringing all monsters back. And that, that was one of them. Um, and at the end of that trailer, they teased Tigrex by letting his raw play. So everyone's like, oh, shit, Tigrex is, is coming back. And I suppose what else indicated is that Nakakuga and Tigrex share the same skeleton. So if they've built it for one, they've got it for the other. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Um, so everyone's like, oh, shit. And then they released another trailer a few weeks later that was all about Tigrex. Um, and then at the end of that, they teased another monster, which... Um, it, the, the the next trailer to reveal that one hasn't come out, but for all intents and purposes, it's probably going to be a monster called Glavinus, which is a T Rex that can breathe fire. And its its big gimmick is its tail is a sword, and it what? likes to slash at you with it. Jeez. And it and it uses its mouth as a whetstone to sharpen it. It like basically grinds its teeth against. The basically, just bites his tail and starts uh, chomping away to get sharper. Yeah. And it's 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 a signature monster from generations. It's a really fucking cool monster. It has some amazing weapons, and um, yeah, it's it's more than likely. It's like a ninety percent chance of it being in in world. But what's more exciting, perhaps, and I'm probably leaping to conclusions because I'm very excited if this comes becomes true. Oh, I could tell. It was a uh, ten-year anniversary, fifteen-year anniversary. Even is it twenty-year anniversary? Surely not. No, it's it's some. Uh, it was some big anniversary recently for Monster Hunter. Um, and Capcom released a like a bit of artwork that showed all the signature monsters, which are all the box art, the big heavy hitters across the series, um, all done in like world quality renders. Uh, okay. And now three of those have. <clears throat> made it into the game so this is almost like a, a fan service you think i this the the latest suspicion or rumor or whatever you want to call it is that they are going to put all the signature monsters in world and that is pretty much all the monsters that i wanted to return and it would I'm, it wouldn't surprise me because um it's just like their best-selling game ever yeah and if they if they manage that like I'm I'm fucking on board 100. percent That's a, like that's another 200 hours right there. <laughs> um, yeah, because like all all the monsters that I wanted to come in are generally signature monsters, um, particularly from the last couple of generations, because that's that's the ones I've mainly played. But um, yeah, if they they put them all in world, holy shit! Like we're gonna get like 12 really fucking good monsters off the bat, plus anything new. Which, yeah, uh, I'm. I'm glad. I mean, this is my first Monster Hunter. Uh, I um, I played a demo of one of the PS2 many years ago, so you can't really count that. But I had a lot of fun with yourself and other people playing, and I'm glad that kind of diehard fans and long-term fans are still enjoying it and are still kind of uh, loving the game and that they're adding new stuff and it's keeping everyone happy. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty certain I'll get back into it. I think the last time I played was the Witcher DLC. I managed to get all the... Uh, the costume for it, just because I'm a big Witcher fanboy. Um, I kind of wish I had actually. I haven't. I haven't really played for for as much as I love World. I don't think I played. I played for like three months solid, and then tailed off quite significantly. Came back for the Kulv Taroth raid and stuff, but beyond that, not so much. But um, yeah. well, you got you guys one. Bring you back in. Lure you oh, back in. So excited, man! So excited. It's it's yeah. The, it's, uh, September's turned into a busy month though. Um, does that? Borderlands 3, uh, the new Destiny expansion, uh, the is Link, uh, oh god, Link's Awakening, is that the one that's Link's getting re- There's like five yeah. or six games all coming out in September, all within like two weeks of each other, and I'm, uh, I'm not going to have time to play them all. 
Um, so yeah, so uh, you know we've talked quite a lot about what we've been playing. Now it's probably worth looking to the future of what we will be eventually playing. So I've mentioned all those games in coming out in September, but you know the the, the I suppose the the main way of looking forward is we've just had E3. Um, and obviously, you know, that's the big, big showcase for what's what's to come. And I don't know how you guys feel, but this was a bit of a damp squib. Yeah, underwhelming. And, um... It's it's this it's it's that end of generation lull. I think the PS3 had it as well, where it's, and the Xbox 360, and where it's just the new consoles haven't been announced, but everyone knows that they're going to be coming pretty soon. Um, so it's yeah, there isn't kind of a whole lot of raft of things to look forward to. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why Sony pulled out. They were just like I said, so what are we really going to be displaying? Have we got anything worth showing? Are we going to be spending all this money on marketing and having a big glossy stage and paying for celebrity appearances? And they made that decision not to, and it was kind of um, quite this divisive. But I, I think it's probably quite smart, actually, quite clever. Yeah, the, the, I don't think anybody really had shit to show this year. Like, there wasn't really much that interesting. Um, you know, it, to I, me, this I, was Xboxes to lose, and they still didn't win. No, yeah. they, didn't really show much. they didn't really show much for Scarlet, did they? They didn't they show didn't shit about anything. It was, I mean, the fucking Halo, the new Halo game should have been it, Halo Infinite, and it, there was no gameplay, yeah. just this like a story could see now it's, yeah, they, it just kind of takes the wind out. So I think the biggest thing from the Xbox stage or the announcement was um, Cyberpunk and Keanu Reeves, but that's multi-platform. Yeah, um, and it's, well, what is it, eight months, nine months away? Yeah, uh, April, April next year. So, yeah, you know, it's there, there wasn't a huge amount of news come out. Um, Breath of the Wild sequel, which was quite good, but again, not much shown really beyond that it's coming. Um, we finally got to see a little bit more about Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is looking promising. Um, I think oh, the big... my God, it looks crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so... the biggest question I've got, though, is how, how much of the final game is this actually going to be? Because I've heard two sets of rumors. One is that it's only going to be Midgard because that's everything that's been shown and they've padded it out a lot more. And it's obviously a, a fairly sig a significant introduction to Final Fantasy VII. Um, the other rumors I've heard are that it's going to be up until Eris's death. Sorry for for twenty odd year old spoilers there, um, <laughs> but ah, uh, you know, but pff, that's quite a lot of the game as well. At the same time, for how much they are showing and how long, like three quarters, isn't it? Two thirds, a lot. That's uh, I don't know really. Is it not like halfway? Is it not the halfway mark? Ah, uh, maybe I'm. Thinking a drug, but uh, oh no, I've not heard that. I've not heard it's not the whole game, but yeah, I, I think you're right. I haven't seen like Niffel, uh, Niffelheim or I haven't seen um, some of the other places. Um, I it's literally just been in Midgard and seen kind of some story scenes and cutscenes and things, and yeah, and it, it just feels like of all the with the lack of forward momentum on this that we've heard, the fact that they were still hiring like core engine designers and developers. Only six months ago, uh, my I'm I'm holding out judgment until I see what we're actually getting. And by then, I'm going to be Final Fantasy out, man. I'm 12 now, 14. Fucking, I, I don't necessarily need to go and see seven again. Don't forget that the eight's coming out again. Well, the remaster, or whatever, not the remaster, the sort of PC versions coming to PlayStation. Of it, yeah, which is fucking unbelievable yeah. because it wasn't the story always that they lost the source code for that, hence why it never been yeah. ported before. Apparently, I like it's, it. it's it was it was good back in the day, anyway. Um, yeah, the, the card game, swords, yeah, absolutely. but so, I don't know. There's a lot of final things happening at the moment. It's one thing that's that's undeniable. Um, okay, so I mean. What happened with what, sorry? 15. It just seemed to disappear from any um, Oh, no. 15. 15 has had a good run, man. 15. It, they've done a lot with 15. They've done loads of DLCs. Out. They released a PC version. Uh, they've made a lot of changes. They've added multiplayer to it as well. Gosh. Uh, they did also, however, they did also cancel a shit ton of DLC for it because it wasn't doing as well as they hoped. Yeah, I think that's the last I heard of it, was that I th actually th didn't, didn't do what they wanted. I really uh, like 15. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I, I mean, considering it was like 
10 years in the fucking making because they did well, uh, Final Fantasy Versus 13. Well, I think that's that was part of the problem. I think they spent so much money and time building this. They were hoping it was going to be a franchise in its own right, and it just hasn't had the legs. I think it was a decent game um, that came out, did all right in terms of a few DLCs, didn't set the world alight, didn't meet their expectations, regardless of how unrealistic or realistic they were. So they've they've kind of pulled plans and are starting to move on. So I don't think it's done badly, but probably not not as well as they not met the. Uh... Investors' expectations, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and you know, I, I really, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I, I really liked the story. Platinum did as well. Oh God! Um, I thought the the world was fantastic as well. I thought it was really well done. I was like, I can't believe this is a game almost at times. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what I was going to do is, uh, you know, we're talking about E three. It generally seems to be a bit un- underwhelming. Nothing shattering. Xbox showed a lot of trailers and a lot of kind of promises. Their Scarlet I thought, announcement. I thought, Nintendo, I thought Nintendo came out best. At least they had some games that yeah. looked interesting. You know? I'd agree. Um, but, but of course, that would be the case because they don't really have anything in terms of... Well, they have a, a Nintendo Switch Mini coming out, but they don't have anything in terms of a new console, you know? I'm, I'm really um, surprised we didn't see anything of the Mini. And one of the latest rumours to go around today is that people actually had um, like accessories for the Switch Mini on the shop floor at E3 and had to yeah. pull them the second day because Nintendo basically said, shut the fuck up, we're not announcing it yet. <laughs> um, it's a really badly kept secret. It is. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, the few, few big announcements. Um, and so what I was going to do is I've got a top 10 of most viewed trailers from E3. No, and I wanted, uh, I wanted you to see if you could guess what they were. I, I think I could probably imagine the top three. So Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah. Is that your number one? Uh, Cyberpunk is probably the number one. Yeah, well, you're right. Uh, can you guess how many views it's had? Uh, let's say 30 million. Do you want to uh, raise or, or lower that estimate, Manny? Uh, I'm going to raise to 40. Oof. <laughs> Uh, well, so you're right, Cyberpunk is number one, but it's got a grand total of 17.1 million oh, views as, as of this article I'm reading. It's probably more now. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, I, that despite that being probably the most interesting thing at E3, that surprises me that's number one, because I don't think CD Projekt Red is what I would call a household name outside of gaming. Yeah. Um, I think Cyberpunk is a fairly niche subject, uh, you know, like that, that kind of Blade Runner-esque, you know, neo-noir future. I don't think that's got wide appeal necessarily. Yeah, the CG Project already know the audience. That's why they brought Keanu Reeves. That's probably yeah, why he can for half that of those game views. Game. Yeah. Absolutely. And am I the am I, the, I you know Keanu Reeves seems like a really nice guy, and he he does a lot of good stuff. You know, when he did the Matrix films, he he gave all, he did he not give away his salary to the cast and crew because they were underpaid, and he was like, ah, I don't really need the money. No, yeah, he, I, I heard that um, story as well. He seems like a really nice guy, and you know, really chill. But having him in a game doing voice acting and motion capture doesn't get me too excited because as much as I like Keanu Reeves and you know the John Wick films that he's he, his big thing at the moment are, are good he's not he's not the best actor he's not the most emotive actor so does that really lend itself to doing more cap and voice voice work for a video game maybe but I mean it's that's how big games are now they're bigger than TVs movies uh, music so it's no surprise that we're getting bigger and better actors kind of taking part in um Oh no, it doesn't. It's, no, it's more. It's more the fact that everyone, like the internet, is going apeshit over the fact that Keanu Reeves is here, and it seems to be more about the fact that you know. Oh, he's. I like him. I mean, it's just like you say, he's a nice guy. He's 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 almost a, a walking meme as well. So it's he's just no. it's just like I say, it's proceed see the project red know their audience. It's just pure fan service, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a PR move. That, that's what it is. That's why part of the reason why that video has got so many views. Um, oh yeah, completely. V three, I think the Keanu Reeves part of. Uh, the cyberpunk uh, trailer was probably the biggest thing that happened in terms of getting reactions. You know. Oh yeah, I mean he is the he is the cover shot of this trailer. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah he's, he's in it for about the uh, thumbnail. He's 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 in it about five seconds as well. The trailer is what like you know a good couple of minutes long. Uh, shows a whole sequence in an apartment and flashbacks, and then he's like the last what ten seconds of outroar. 
Yep, and then he's, um, he comes on, makes the announcements and things. Yeah, so everybody goes insane. Yeah, so Cyberpunk is is number one, which I say shocks me because I I don't I think it's it's a bit of a niche game in in the wider yeah sense. I I agree, but I think it's the one that people made the most noise about coming out of this E3. Yeah, that's why I would say that was probably the uh, number one uh, most viewed trailer. So come on, give me another top ten. Some of these might actually surprise you because some of the, I don't think some of these games are going to be any good. Okay, um, <sighs> next one then I would say. Go on, I'll, I'll let Matty choose next. I, I got the first mm-hmm. one, so I'm I'm done. Yellow Infinite has to be top three, I think. Oh, yeah, you're, you're just out. It's actually number four. Oh, do you want to give us a guess how many uh, how many views? Bearing in mind that um, Cyberpunk was number one. I'll say three million one. then. Three. I'll say five. Uh, so, Matty, you're closer with 6.7 million views at, at the time of this article getting written. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned it before, Cash. Not a great trailer. Um, doesn't tell us anything about what Halo Infinite's about. Um, doesn't give us any idea of gameplay. The only thing it really said is, oh, it's going to be on Xbox One and Scarlet. Yeah. And that doesn't please me. I'd much rather, unless this is coming out this year, I'd much rather it been on Xbox Scarlet and being a true next gen game. Because mm. Destiny, the first Destiny did this, straddled a generation, and was held back in a major way because of it. Yeah, I uh, think so. I, I, I think though we're at that point in technology where it's almost not a limiting factor anymore. Like the, the leap between PS2, PS3, and PS4, um, and between now, next gen, and this gen, and next gen, isn't in terms of graphics and fidelity, isn't going to be that big. Uh, and the reason I say that as well because of a lot of the um, like the Scarlet announcement and the um, the talks that Max Cerny and Sony have been having about the PlayStation Five have always been about performance improvements. I haven't seen anything in terms of like a graphical improvement or a graphical kind of. I mean, maybe there will be because we've got a year away yet. Uh, but it's always like this is an SSD yeah. now. We're going to be able to do this much more. It's got four thousand times more processing power. It just seems to be you can just cram so much more shit in rather than you can improve the shit you've already have. It's Sorry, a CPU mate. that will be a big upgrade, but I don't think, well, I'm just guessing here, but I'm not sure where Halo Infinite will be necessarily, a, you know, uh, a game that demands uh, high CPU usage because it's not, yeah. you know. An open it, well, I suppose, yeah, taking into what Ben said, if it's going to be uh, well, backing off the last gen. The trouble is, yeah. uh, so I can take what you're saying, Cash, in that you don't think there's going to be a huge graphical leap between consoles. I, I think they, there will be, just because that's what sells things. When you make them look pretty, people want to buy them. However, the, 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 big, the big thing at the moment, like you mentioned, is going to be performance, faster, it, almost instantaneous load times using solid-state drives. That, to me, introduces a far bigger gulf between Xbox One and Scarlet and PS4 and, and PS5 when it eventually comes out, because you can't have... Halo Infinite players on Xbox One playing with Halo Infinite players on Scarlet when Scarlet players mm-hmm. load in in half a second and Xbox One users have to sit there for 30. Yeah. Whereas at least if you at least if it was just about graphical jumps the Xbox One users would still be both play, people would be sitting there for 30 seconds but the, the Xbox One users would just get a slightly uglier game. Um, and I say ugly in you know inverted commas because nothing looks ugly these days not really. Um <laughs> I think the way they're gearing the new consoles, it almost introduces a bigger problem of these cross-generation straddling things. If if you're gonna mix uh, player pools, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is a problem because at what point at what point do Microsoft say to developers, okay, well, you don't have to factor in uh, the Xbox One or Xbox One S. You know, it becomes a yeah. phone situation because if they're saying, okay, we're going to release games compatible across, you know, X amount of devices, you are right in, in that it could limit what developers can do. Uh, I'm, but... I'm actually quite on board with the phone, like, upgrade plan route. If it's not, I mean, obviously, if it's as frequent as phones, I think that would be a nightmare, but... Um... I don't think it would be. I think that... It, mm. uh, say every three years, I'd, I'd get on board yeah. with that. I'd be on board with it as well. I'm an enthusiast enough that I'd quite happily buy a, a PlayStation whatever um every three years as long as it was you know as long as there was some tangible benefit yeah well that's it i mean it, it might it might i don't know if this will become the norm or if it was just a one-off situation where um both sony and microsoft realized they needed to capitalize on uh the, the hype of 4k um but well, 
the the, the rumors of new console is uh, 8K. Um, I can't say 8K being a thing. Nobody's even upgraded to 4K yet, really. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> yeah I know, but I mean that's. It, that's how much they're taking it seriously, and that's how much they're kind of future-proofing the things. Um, so, I remember when PS3 and Xbox 360 came out, and it was HDMI, and I, I did have a HDMI till like many years later. Yeah, I, I, I think so. They're, they're saying like, oh, 8K with 120 frames a second. I, what I think that means is, well, you can have one or the other. Yeah. So what's most likely happen is we'll just increase the fucking particles that fly out of things when you shoot them. Yeah, um, I think that's probably what it's going to be. Yeah, I'd be shocked if all of a sudden we we went to this kind of universal 60 frame per second is the minimum, uh, you know, the acceptable kind of standard, and you know th- that becomes the big focus. But who who knows? That that would be good if, if Microsoft and Sony started enforcing that as like preferred, um, a preferred so way of development. Be, but I'm not sure they could do that because that would be. I don't think they want to instruct developers. Uh, in that regard, because certain developers may, with certain games, prioritize the the look. You know, in oh, JRPG, completely. you don't need sixty frames per second. You know, no, you you, you don't you don't at all. Um, you you, um, you you're completely right. Different games need need different things, and I think especially bigger companies will always lean towards making their games look more photo photo realistic because yeah, yeah. that's easier to sell. It's very hard to tell a sell to a layman. Well, it's you know it runs at a solid rock solid at sixty frames a second because most people are like, what the fuck does that mean? Or I can't even <laughs> tell. Um, you know, so anyway, um, go on, G- give me give me another one. So we've got number one, number four. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna. <sighs> Sorry, mate. What are you saying? I'll just quickly say it reminds me of um, uh, Breath of the Wild in that Microsoft have already kind of promised that Halo will, will be coming to um, Xbox One. So, like, to to go back on that would be faster. Oh, yeah, I don't think they'll go back on it. It just feels like a... It Elemental, feels like it? it's taken too too long to get another Halo out, and it's ended up in this weird in-between generation situation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of which, I think that's probably one of the top three as well, Breath of the Wild. Uh, it's not, actually. It's ah. in the top ten. It's number seven. Fair enough. Oh, well. Do you want to guess how many million views? <laughs> Two then? Uh, no. One point four. No, it's number seven with four point nine. They're all quite close. Oh, I think, fair enough. In the middle okay. chunk. Okay, uh, if it's not um, Breath of the Wild two, then um, I think in either the... Gears or um, Watch Dogs Legion. So Gears does not make it onto the top ten. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Unsurprisingly, the trailers were dog shit for that. <laughs> um, I really was unimpressed with that stuff. Um, so, Watchdog Legion is uh, actually number ten with uh, oh. well, how, how many? How many million views? Uh, okay, lower um, getting lower. Not so low, but you know, lower. Three, three point four. Oh, three, three, bang on the money. Ooh. Three million views. Uh, I think Watchdog's Legion looks fun. Looks good. Like it. Looks... I, it just looked fun. I, I love the. Uh, I mean, it was it was obviously kind of well orchestrated as Ubisoft do, but um, I like the idea that you could play as any NPC. You can recruit anybody, um, and <laughs> the grandma sequence was just really funny. <laughs> and when he kind of stood on stage and he was like, "These grandmas are badass," I just couldn't stop laughing. It was just it's such a funny notion that you could complete a game with just geriatric people, like just raid an old people's home and just beef up your army or something so it, yeah I, i'm I'm gonna be watching it very closely yeah it, it feels like watchdogs is a series that has a general premise but it's never really had a proper identity and really struggles with its identity and yeah. this feels like a nice fun slant on it and i really like the fact that it's just set in this like fascist post brexit britain oh fucking hell I, I that's one thing i don't like is the um the setting well not so much that it's london but just everyone's got a really box standard <laughs> Cockney lock stock, two smoking barrels <laughs> Cockney accent, man. It's like watching an episode of EastEnders. And I Have you never been down London? London? That's exactly what it's like. <sighs> no, I, I, I haven't been for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah that, that's number 10. Um, so, so there's a few games on here that I don't, don't think you would guess. I'll give you them just to narrow down the list. Uh, so you guess Legion, uh, Watch Out Legion at number 10. Number 9 is Minecraft Dungeons, which is a bit like a Diablo style Minecraft oh, game. It yep. uh, looks pretty fun for what it is. Um, Number eight, right, I would never have guessed this was on the top ten because I barely remember it being at the show, and from everything I've heard, it's probably going to be a bit shit. 
but it's Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Uh, and yeah, I saw some. I saw some gameplay, and I was like, it's gonna be bollocks. And that's at three point six million views. You know, Dragon Ball Z still, still very popular. Um, hey, hey. See, so then you got uh, Breath of the Wild two at uh, number seven. Um, can you guess what number six might be? Nintendo. It's not. It's going to be multi-platform, but it's. It gives a clue. Uh, we've already talked about it tonight. Uh, we've talked about a few games in this series. Final Fantasy? It is. So the Final New Fantasy expansion. VII Remake. Uh, oh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, right. Um, with uh, 5.5 million views. So obviously, you know, a lot of hype behind that. Let's hope it delivers. Right. You'll never guess number five because fuck me, I would never have thought this would even, why they even brought this to E3. But it's all, it's, it's a massive seller. It's, it's always going to be, you know, in the running. And it's, um, I'm just going to give you it. It's FIFA 20. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. Six point six you know, when you, million when you, when you, views. When you said I never would have guessed, and it's always a big sell. I was like, it's, it's not FIFA, is it? In my head. Yep. Oh God. Who the fuck remembers this even being at E3? I don't I, at all. I do not. But um, the chavs on the corner of the street who only play FIFA day in day out probably watched it a hundred times on their phone. So yeah, they probably counts for something. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, we've we're, we're been quite snobby about this, but FIFA sells so much, especially in this country. I mean, fucking hell. It's it's like... Oh, this, this, five. And it, most people at my workplace who have a PlayStation 4 will get FIFA, and that's probably the only game and maybe a Call of Duty that they'll get, and they'll do nothing else. It's it's weird uh, to me. as somebody who yeah, plays a lot of games. Yeah, what you feel for it? it's, it's just the new FIFA. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's strange because... If if it was taken much more seriously, there'd be questions raised about you know what's different between the two um, years besides you know the players and the teams and you know what mechanics are new and uh, bits and pieces like that. But everyone just seems to give it a free pass because it's FIFA. Well, that that's it. Like we'll probably come into it when we go into news. But like you know the whole loot box um, controversy that's firing up at the moment like fifa is probably the worst vendor or one of them of that and yet it gets a bit of a free pass by the gaming press at large because they just don't give a shit about oh, sports yeah. games fifa ultimate team is just fucking ridiculous and it's it's not held by the community as well you see youtubers like spending um, 100 quid on a fifa ultimate team and getting ronaldo and this kind of ditzy glamour and it's yeah. just I mean, it's, I've got, part, it's part of the problem, absolutely. I've got I've got some some stories about that uh, for a little bit later, so I, I'll, I'll go into that. But um, we've got two on this. So you guess number one with Cyberpunk. Can you guess uh, number two, uh, two and three? And I'll give you a clue. Disney owns both of these franchises. So the Marvel Avengers. That was number two with sixteen point five million. Which I'm surprised because that didn't seem anything really to me. Um, oh my god, it looked bad. I'm gonna say it yeah, looked bad. It, and, it looked more like Backstreet Boys and Avengers, but um, well, it's it's weird. Like it's this weird situation where this game's been in development for a long time. I mean, when was it announced? Like two, three years ago at E3. The, this is the first time we've seen any gameplay. Yeah. The character design is is bad. It's like it, it, they seem to have gone for the likeness, and it's just. It's, they look it's, like this kind they of focus person. too much on the likeness rather than the actual person. It just seems really off. Well, you know, I, I, it feels like they've tried to base them on the movie equivalents, but not quite because we don't have the rights to them. It's not a movie game, so we'll half ass it, and it, they just don't look great. Like yeah. everybody kind of looks like you know what they look like. They look like the film versions when they like do a live show based on the films, and they've got to get like <laughs> actors standing in for them. Like if you went to Avengers Pantomime or the uh, the Adventures on Ice, it'd be something. Yeah, like that. and that's this is what we've got here, and we've got no real gameplay as such. Um, the messaging on this game is all over the place. Is it a live service game that's multiplayer? Is it a single player like campaign focused thing? Um, nobody seems to know, and after so long in development. It, I, I don't know. It, I'm, I'm not looking forward to it at all. It feels like a big wasted opportunity. Gosh. Based on what we've seen, based, based on what we've seen, you know, um, it, it could turn out great. Don't feel like it's going to. Um, so the other one then, Disney. Um, I don't know. Is, is it Marvel related? It's not. It's <sighs> the Sorry, Mike, what was Star Wars. That? Oh, Jedi Order. Oh, Fallen yep. Jedi. Is it? Sorry. That's number three with 11.7 million. Fallen Order. Oh, speaking of mediocre, bloody hell. Good job that we mentioned that. Fucking hell. 
See, I like loads of people are really down on it. I think it looks fine. It looks just like a yeah. Uh, it looks fine. It it plays fucking. It just did look. It just looked really off. It just didn't seem like the the main character just seemed really bland. Uh, the lightsaber fighting just I don't know. Just seemed really off. Just didn't seem very um what you'd expect. Just didn't seem very lightsabery. Like he was hitting people and they were just kind of getting knocked back and. <sighs> I don't know. I, I for me, the last good um, lightsaber Star Wars platforming game was Force Unleashed. See, I, I, I find it really hard to like believe that that was a good game. It was to me that was a mediocre game at best. Like it, it that, that didn't use lightsaber combat pretty much at all, and it's all it was all about force powers. And they, it basically was just an excuse to show off some new tech, like the um, oh, the, was it molecular something or other that the yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And then the ragdoll physics, which Grand Theft Auto has been using ever since. Um, the oh god, what's it called? Euphor- Euphoria. Euphoria. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, like everything I've heard about this game is when people were playing it, it during the show, um, the 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 developers were like imp- impressions from people who've played it are far stronger. And apparently, the developers are, are trying to get the message out of what type of game it is because this is a fen- effectively a, a Metroidvania game where you've got a ship and you can travel to planets at will and you va- unlock abilities as you go. It's got a bit of Dark Souls where you meditate at um, certain checkpoints to respawn enemies in the search. Uh, so there's that like, risk reward around pushing forward. Yeah. Um, apparently, the combat plays a little bit like Sekiro, which is uh, the From Software's last game, which was fucking amazing combat in terms of enemies have like a, a posture gauge that you've got to break in order to attack them. Um, I, I don't know. And the fact that it's Respawn developing this, I don't think Respawn have not made a bad game yet. Yeah. True. I, I've been playing Epic that much. I suppose I can give it a free pass. I, I tell you, what I did like. I did like. Um... Uh, Forrest Whitaker's character, I don't know if it's actually him, but I, I, he was one of my favorite bits of uh, Star Wars Rogue One, and he's kind of there with all his limbs, so you get, I guess you get to find out how he lost them all. I'd imagine so, because, you know, we need all these details in the extended universe. Um, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's the, the top ten, uh, so I'll just quickly run down. No Doom, no Doom as well. No that's Doom. Um, I think Doom's popular, but not that popular, um, but I thought it looked good. It looked like more Doom. Which is not a bad thing. Uh, but the top 10s Watchdog Legion, Minecraft Dungeons, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, Breath of the Wild 2, Final Fantasy VII Remake, FIFA 20, <sighs> Halo Infinite, Jedi <laughs> Fallen Order, Marvel's Avengers, Cyberpunk 2077. So that's, that's E3. I don't think any of us are that enthusiastic about any of these games really i think at best i'm hoping some of them are gonna they're gonna be good i mean like i'm gonna be really enthusiastic about breath of the wild 2 but it's so far away that you yeah know, I, it, we, they didn't even call it breath of the wild 2 they were just like the sequel to breath of the wild is now in development yeah yeah and apparently it started off as dlc but that grew out of control so that could both be really good but also pretty limiting yeah um, yeah we've seen you have to wait and ways. see you'll have to let us know how it is um yeah i'll, I'll probably buy it um and then get halfway through and then stop playing it. Like I know. <laughs> um, okay then. So God, we've, we've been on quite a while. So we've got some some news. I'll we'll, we'll try and get through this relatively quickly. Uh, the first news story that I got. It's a weird one. Uh, we talked a little bit about this when we we first got together, but it's the fact that um, you know, obviously in the last God, what was it six months or so? Telltale collapsed. Uh, you know, went into administration, dissolved, okay. whatever you want to say. Um, and it's been this weird situation ever since of where, you know, all its games are starting to get delisted while the rights to them are sorted out. Just because all their, their, their games are like licensed products, it must be a nightmare of like rights holders and who gets what. Oh, especially if you go in an administration and things like that. Yeah. yeah rights like, and things and people don't want to buy the company if they don't get certain rights. And it's, it's a problem as well. It's highly a problem with them. Um, digital games like if you had these let's say on a disc we wouldn't care less really it's well i mean sad that people lose their jobs but in terms of having access to the games wouldn't be a problem but now it's like uh, you have to download these games before a certain time otherwise you're never going to see them again or you have to buy them for a certain time never see them again and i think the news item you're going to touch on is um that they're appearing on the xbox store for hundreds and hundreds of pounds for an episode <laughs> of a particular game it is yeah so in particular, this is Telltale's Minecraft story mode, and in in particular, it's the Xbox 360 storefront. 
Um, so currently, if you want to buy the full eight part series of that, um, it will cost you £455. Um, Worth it. Eight... Bargain. Bargain. <laughs> Can you stream that on Netflix for, like, for the cost of a subscription now as well? I'm pretty sure they ported that to Netflix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you can play it on, uh, you know, it, there's eight episodes. Um, the first one is free to get you hooked. You know, that's what they do. Uh, and then every episode after that is $64.99 on the Xbox 360. <laughs> now, this basically seems to be a situation that links in with that, that, that telltale fallout. Nobody knows who the hell owes what. They're starting to delist games. They are going to delist this game on June 25th. So it, it'll already be gone um, now as, as of us doing this podcast. But for like a week or two, it was it was at this absorbent cost. And basically the idea was because the Xbox 360 was set up, God knows what, like Jesus Christ, what, 10, 10, 15 years ago. Um, the infrastructure doesn't like didn't allow them just to like stop selling it or they, they needed to keep it up so people could download it. Yeah. Um, so uh, but they can't stop selling it at the same time. There's some weird limitations. So effectively, yeah, if somebody what, wants to buy it, you have to give them the opportunity to, to buy it. So you can't kind of not buy a game. Um, so, yeah, that's why they've increased the price dramatically and they've said quite clearly, don't buy this. Just do not buy it. This is literally for people who've already bought it so they can download it again. So, I mean, basically what, uh, what, what Microsoft have come out and said, from working with the 360 platform, the only solution to the situation is to relist the downloadable content for purchase. Um, so to assist existing customers, all downloadable episodes for the two Minecraft story mode titles are temporarily relisted. But to deter new purchases, they will be relisted at a very high price. So basically, they they can't like list something for download and not sell it. They've got to do both. So they've maxed out. They've basically set it to what I assume is the highest possible price you can set in the Xbox 360 storefront in the hopes that some idiot doesn't buy it. And I guarantee there are a lot of rich idiots out there who hope oh, yeah. for, for the lols. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I mean, this this isn't really noteworthy, other than it's just, you know, it's highlighting the shit stuff, like the shit show that Telltale Games has left behind, um, and all the crazy rights, you know, shenanigans yeah. that are going around. Yeah. Because everything they did was rights based. Everything was like a franchise. Um, they they haven't done an original game for fucking years, like five years plus. And it's just it's caused the the company to eventually implode. See, I, I I thought they were untouchable. I thought they're doing everything. They did um, Borderlands. They did Jurassic Park. They did a really successful Walking Dead. They did Minecraft. I mean, uh, the thing is, Game though, of Thrones. Even when was the last time you played any of those? Though uh, I think I played um, the Batman one fairly recently, but that's only because it came on the PlayStation Plus. So I I think I maybe I've only bought one episode ever, um, and that was like. Game of Thrones episode two on my phone because um, I really like the first one, I mean, and then even then, even even then, they released that on the PlayStation Plus, so I didn't even end up buying the rest of the episodes there. So, mate, have you ever played any of the Telltale games? Uh, not since I think The Walking Dead. I think I played the first episode of that and then further. So, um, I, I, personally, I've played Walking Dead season one and the DLC for that, which was four hundred days. I'm going to say. Um, Tales from the Borderlands, Wolf Among Us. Uh, I feel like I've I've not played through it, but I don't know if I bought Game of Thrones and then didn't play through it, but I think my wife did. Um, yeah, so I, I've played the most, and even I have only played like a third of what they released. If if that Tales from the, did I say Tales from the Borderland? Yeah. That that's actually a really good one. Um, I'd, I'd, yeah, that, that was actually supposed to be the one according to what I was saying, but it was it was genuinely good, and it sounds like Borderlands Three is going to follow on from it, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, I just thought this was just a, like a curiosity. Really, it's kind of just a weird, like just a weird thing that happens in in video games sometimes, like just bizarre. Yeah, but... it's it's like I say, I think it highlights the problem with going digital only. Um, with things like that, and yeah, sad. Very sad to see a company go, especially one that's so well recognised, and uh, very sad to see people not able to potentially have the games that they pay for as well. Well, yeah, I mean, shit, I'm out of luck for most of my things that I've bought. I, I've played through them, and I probably won't again. But like, still, hey ho. Um, 
So any happier um, news before we leave, or is that um, hey, just leave it on a button? No, no, no. I've got a, got a few more. So that should be. Uh, oh god, actually, I don't think they are good news. I, I'll I'll go uh, I'll go with the good news. <laughs> We've already talked about Apex Legends a little bit, but season two is upon us. July second starts next week. There's been a few trailers for it. There's a gameplay trailer and then a bit of a story trailer to show off the uh, the, the changes. Um, looks interesting. So yeah, I saw the I think the story trailer before we came on. Um, with what's the new character and also kind of like the newsy broadcasty way that they've kind of reported on all the changes to the maps. Um, uh, I, so I think what I so I, I'm calling the story in the gameplay trailer, but I think that the gameplay trailer because the story trailer is. You know when they do the trailers that are more like Borderlands esque graphics, they're like more cartoon. Oh, okay, like uh, like concept arty kind of thing. Yeah, so there's one like that which shows it. The, the, they've kind of tried to build a story into why the map's changing, and the story is that the the Repulsa Tower, which generates a field around the island in Apex Legends that keeps the wildlife away, has been bombed or like destroyed by a mysterious figure in a laptop. Wait, wait sorry, with a laptop, um, <laughs> and. The the rumors are this mysterious figure is a guy called Crypto, who's been a character that's been teased before, and it's essentially this first official in-game tease. Uh, he destroys this repulsive tower, which allows the wildlife to come on the island. Yeah, I, I was, like was going to say, because I've I've noticed very kind of slowly, I thought I was seeing things, but the Leviathans at the edge of the map have slowly started getting closer and closer. And I'm like, are they getting closer? Have they just moved them around and I'm being stupid? So... Yeah, no, it's... you're definitely right. One of them has kind of gone like clockwise around the map. Yeah, like, like, bit by bit. So yeah, they're, they're coming on at the map, uh, which I imagine will be like a it, the, the the gameplay trailer shows their mirage getting stamped on by one. Um, so they look like just giant legs that come down from the sky and crush people. Yeah. Um, we're getting the little dragony type things that fly around with loot boxes. Yeah, they're they're in, they're in the game right now. I don't know if you've seen them. I haven't been on in the last week or two, so I so, haven't seen them. So they're in there right now in a form. Basically, as you land, you'll see the dragons roaring, or you'll hear them roaring, and you'll see them flying, and they've got um, a death box in their claws, like they're clutched, and if you shoot them down, they'll drop the death box. And there's usually like a purple or a gold in there as well. Oh, cool. So they, I think they're coming in much bigger uh, numbers now. Uh, the map's changing, the area's been redesigned. Uh, kind of story that the islands basically we've lost control of the island and the wildlife's taken over so we've established bases to try and take it back and some areas have regrown because we haven't been able to get into them keep them under control and it, it's interesting it's nice that like basically it, it feels like they're possibly redeveloping some of the the underdeveloped parts of the map yeah it, it, is... it looks good like like matty was saying earlier the um the burnt out forest it's uh, it looks nice but to actually play on it is terrible because it's just wide open people can see you coming yeah. from a mile off um i think you and i have probably uh, been down there and been caught off many times many times so now they've um, switched around it's now no longer a burnt out forest it's a brand new forest and there's new trees and it's all green and there's plenty of camouflage and plenty of cover so yeah, yeah. very good and a lot of the other places uh, have got like bridges taken out and uh, new towers built in. I haven't seen if Skull Towns had a change. I hope so. Oh my god! Uh, your Town. favorite place, the Thunderdome, has been redesigned. Yeah, uh, they, they changed it a little bit actually. They, at the moment, there's loads of loot bins around, so there's more people tend to go. Oh, that's good because that that was a weird area in that it could either be really good or really shit depending on what spawned there. Like it was either you know rags or riches basically. It was odd. yeah. Um, so on top of the map changes, we've got a new character in Watson, who's like a very defensive character. She can put little Tesla coils down to create barriers. Her ultimate um, recharges her team shields, I think. So she's pretty fucking powerful. Um, she looks quite interesting. They're bringing the L-Star SMG into the game, which is a, um, a legendary weapon from, from airdrops. Um, it fires energy bolts that travel slower than other bullets, but are bigger to compensate. Um, very powerful, kind of in short bursts. Uh, there's new hop ups, which uh, I think let's have a look. Uh, the hop ups are disruptor rounds for uh, the alternator and RE45, which are the SMGs, basically increased damage to shields, hammer point rounds uh, for the P2020 and the Mozambique to make them less than bullshit like they currently are. Um, well, Mozambique's actually worth it now. Well, they do increase like health damage, unshielded damage, and the idea is that you'll you'll like. You'll use a weapon will, to will somebody shield, down and then finish and it. then switch to that to finish them off. Um, energy weapons are getting a mag extension, which is quite good. Nice. 
Um, some of the weaker weapons have been powered up, so the P2020 alternator, triple take, things like that. Um, Are you going to get it? Are you going to buy Season 2 Pass? I'm probably going to buy it, just because I'm a fucking dickhead who buys things I'm probably not going to then play <laughs> enough. Um, um, I, I probably will, just because I think Apex is such a fun game. I'm happy to put another tempo on playing it, um, but I, I don't know if I'll be spending as much time on this season as I did last season, and even last yeah. season wasn't a huge amount, so uh, the, but I've got enough um, coins to get the new character, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, I'll probably, uh, probably pick up uh, Watson, she seems pretty cool. Um, we'll, we'll have to get on. Uh, Matt, you said you got a PS Pro again? Yeah, back in PlayStation again. So you have to, you'll have to download Apex, we'll have to get on, and I'll put it on the stream, and we'll have to get a couple of games when Season 2 kicks off. Um, but yeah, so so I thought good news, like a bit of new, like one of the things that, like, you know, other than the improvements that change the map, it seems like they're stepping up their skin game. The skins that they're giving characters seem far more detailed, far more think, in line with, like, what Overwatch offers. Yeah, like with season one, I think one of the biggest complaints was the skins and the stuff that was on offer just was shit. lackluster. Um, so it, it seems like they're learning from their mistakes. So yeah, hold them off for it. So. Yeah, so, so good news uh, for good news for Apex. It's you know I'm hoping that it's got a little bit more life in it because um, I'm really enjoying it still for when I do play it. Um, the next news story that I've got is one that I thought was close to home, being from the northeast, uh, and that is that game, the video game retail chain that's been around for God, quite a long time now, um, has been taken over by Sports Direct, which is owned by one of the most hated men in the northeast, Mike Ashley. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. So yeah, he Mike Ashley is kind of known for buying up failing businesses and then trying to trying to transform them. I mean, sports his his behemoth is Sports Direct, which is notorious for basically selling yep. like cheap sportswear and um, exploiting their workers in factories as well. Yeah, he's not the best employer, to be honest. I mean, the man's worth a lot of money, and for all intents and purposes, he's a successful businessman, but he seems like a sleazy kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they um, they bought something else. Was it Debenhams recently? Or was it he something tried else? to. the bought House of Fraser. He's trying to buy Debenhams. He uh, owns Newcastle United uh, and is widely hated for it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's been in the news recently, but that's that's a different kind of podcast. Um, yeah, I heard about that. But gamers change their market. They it's not just kind of the games store anymore. They're also doing um, I think like uh, like when I go to my game store now, the new one in town, there's like uh, land parties behind. You can kind of yeah, rent out the uh, the consoles and the uh, the PCs, and you can play with your friends and have like land parties and stuff. And I think there's they advertise it for like birthday parties and things. So I think that's their push now. And it's it's interesting. Um, I don't know how successful that will be. It's, it's, it's weird new. because uh, the game is like pretty much the last of the brick and mortar stores in this country. Uh, yeah. I mean, Gradier Games isn't really as big. Um, the only gone. big. I mean, that closed yeah. is gone now, isn't it? Um, yeah. CX, sorry. Um, is probably the biggest competitor. It's um, a weird, it's a weird competitor though because it it's basically a it, it's effectively a pawn shop that focuses on yeah. And, and it's 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 is what is it cash converters? Yeah, <laughs> it's basically cash converters for games and movies. Basically, yeah. Um, but I I mean, if I'm going to sell my game and I'm going to buy a game, I probably go to CEX because I'm always going to get the better price. Yeah, and that's why I miss me scratch my head. I'm thinking, why are you doing it? But when you go to game now, it's you get some sh- shells of gaming, but you get a lot of kind of merchandise. There's a lot of like the pop toys. There's a lot of kind of gift oh. cards. There's a lot of kind of um, little uh, kind of jewelry kind of things and uh, yeah, novelty I mean, items and things like that. Weird, though, isn't it? Because the obviously the physical um, sales are declining. Yeah, they don't make money on physical sales as much, so it's it's much easier to. Um, Buy a game and then sell it for just pure profit, and they're not doing that with brand new games. So I mean that's where CX's business is, and I think game historically might have had that business, but they they're not getting there anymore. No, I mean game seems to rely on clueless parents and grandparents going in and spending over over the odds to buy games for Christmas. I mean they charge RRP plus like ten percent. Yeah, I in the last maybe five years, um, I think I've maybe bought two 
possibly three games um, from game. And they were probably like midnight launches because I couldn't get them for anywhere else. I think one was GTA 5 because uh, I couldn't get anywhere else. And I, I'll, most of the time, I'll do my shopping online and I'll I'll get a much better price for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand. I mean, it's weird. Like, maybe he has plans for it. What will probably end up happening is they'll, they'll end up selling just more and more tat. They'll maybe expand their LAN party thing and push for that. Can you Would imagine, you... like, a, a Sports Direct and a game collaboration? Like, you run on the treadmill, you're <laughs> running in Skyrim or something. Gaming well, you know what I'm looking forward to most? is massive game mugs. <laughs> yes. Next to my Sports Direct one. That, yep, that's all I want from this. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it's a bit shit because um, actually the the branch, the game branch in Newcastle, um, I've not been there for a long time, but I must have followed them on Facebook once upon a time because they, they put a message out that said, um, we're closing. Uh, you know, we're, we're anybody like we're, we're basically shedding most of our staff, and those who remain will be moving to the uh, the Metro Center um, branch, which is kind of the, the next closest one. Probably gets a bit more footfall. Um, and it's just weird that game can't sustain a presence in what is probably the biggest city in this area of the country. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's. it's I, I remember when they had um, electronic boutique. Um, and there was literally four branches of at least three in Bradford. There was two games and an electronic boutique. And I always I thought, man, this, this, this is like the golden age of gaming. You can't get better at this. And now it's down to one what measly is- little game store and one CX store. They, they're almost opposite each other and they just kind of <laughs> compete. It's like because, I mean, the, the number of people who buy physical games is declining. But as someone who still buys physical games, um, ironically, I buy them online. Yeah, because the prices <laughs> tend to be better. So yeah, it's it's it makes sense because it gets delivered to your door and it's a cheaper price. Why would you go out and pay for something more extra? It's simple science. Pre-order but, or buy when it comes to your door, you know. But it's it's it, you kind of have some sympathy for retail. It's not just game because it's not level playing field p- uh, play back in the day. I mean, it's Rakuten now, and a lot of these other companies they list themselves as being um, abroad, so they have to pay like VAT tax and. That's how they can kind of get away with uh, charging less. Yeah, uh, whereas even, game, even, brick and mortar stores, you, you can't really do that. And you do have some sympathy and you kind of think what's going to be the future of the high street is not going to be one. Uh, so, yeah, yeah something has to change. Supermarkets, supermarkets selling games at a way more competitive price than than game or wherever is, you know, because they're See, trying to take Yeah, but to they can get away with it because the, it's almost like we're not going to make money of this game. We'll sell it at the lowest possible margin. The idea yeah. is you bring people in and we'll make the money on, let's say, a fucking a chocolate and a packet of crisps where they'll get kind of doubled the margin or <laughs> something. Well, you're, not, you're not fucking wrong. Like, supermarket loss leaders, and we're not even loss leaders, they sell it at cost price to cover the, cover the unit price. But as you see, you'll go in for the game and come out with a bag of Doritos and a can of Mountain Dew as well. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm mean, very stereotypical. I've been very facetious, but um, yeah. So it, it's it's weird. But I mean, looking at the um the kind of press statement that was released, it basically sounds like the sports director was discussing um like a, a mutually beneficial takeover of game, and then just like swooped in. Yeah, I heard that. And took over aggressively. Yeah, I heard it was pretty aggressive, even though on the face of it, they wanted to be all blue skies and butterflies. Yeah, but it's back, Ashley. I don't think you expect anything else. Yeah, so weird, um, weird, weird purchase. But he's, as much as you might not like the man, he, he seems to know what he's about for the most part. Um, I wouldn't like to work for him. Uh, oh, no, hell no. Hell but, no. But uh, I just thought it was interesting because I don't think, I mean, that game's not the best fucking chain in its, its own right. So. It just feels like uh, it's, it's, bad, it's almost bad, maybe bad, a closing bad. of a chapter and not an end of an era is what I'm hoping. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see where that. I mean, that's a whole whole conversation, really, about you know brick and mortar, digital, and all the rest of it. Jesus Christ, would but uh, that might be for another day. Um, I'm just I'm just looking at the time now. We've we've been fucking recording for ages now. Um, as a result, I uh, I, yeah, I just thought I just thought it was an interesting. Yeah, it's really weird. They kind of come out of left field. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Um, probably the biggest story though, and we'll see how long, we'll, how much mileage we get out of this one. See, see how how much steam anyone's got left at this point. <laughs> um, 
is there was the parliamentary committee uh, in the UK that grilled, uh, you know, that, that put on the spot uh, representatives from EA and Epic um, last week, where they basically, it's the, oh God, it's the ever incompetent and unfit for purpose digital culture, media and sports committee. Um, yep. These fucking clowns. Jesus Christ. I know. It's uh, so uh, terrible. I, but they had um, they had some big names there. They had uh, the uh, legal president of EA, was it? Uh, the legal general counsel, who's basically That's like it. Epic's fucking lawyer, basically. Like their, their head fucking lawyer. So what did they have? Uh, the electronic art representatives were Sean Campbell, who's the UK country manager. Uh, and Kerry Hopkins, who's Vice President of Legal and Government Affairs. I mean, fuck me, what does a game company... Why would company... You have a game company need to have that? Yeah, exactly. So they, they obviously know. So she, either she's been given that job when this kicked off, or they already knew shit was brewing. Um, Epic, however, sent uh, Matthew uh, Weisinger, Weisinger uh, Director of Marketing, and then a guy called Canon Pence, the company's general counsel. So they're fucking lawyer, basically. Um and it was fucking embarrassing on both sides, man. I mean, first of all, the Digital Culture and Media Sports Committee, or whatever you want to call them, um, this was a branch that was started, what, like 10 years ago or so, to, to police over kind of modern media and culture and things like that. They're a fucking joke, man. Yeah. These are the, these are the clowns that try to put a ban on pornography for all <laughs> tax-paying British adults. Yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to sign up for a, a wanking license, essentially. Not like the, 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 oh my god! So to view pornography on the internet, they wanted me to go down to the corner shop and tell Bill behind the counter that I wanted a wanking license and I was old enough to have one. <laughs> and this is all for the, this is all for protecting the vulnerable in our society. Absolutely. Jesus Christ! I mean, and you know, this was what was that? The porn ban meant to go on the. It go into it uh was it meant to go into effect like May? It's, it's either imminently or it's already gone um and yeah it's 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 not happening i remember there was um an onus on um isps i don't say isps but on uh, internet providers to request the ages of their customers and <laughs> verify that they were happy to uh have these filthy images downloaded into their machines, and you just think, what age are we fucking living in? It's not North Korea, man. You don't have to tell me what I can and can't see. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I find it particularly offensive because I'm in a household where no children exist. Like, mm. I don't see why I should have to be... You have to, you have to check with your cat, Ben. Is your cat going to be offended <laughs> by these images? Probably. <laughs> Cross-species, poly, you know, interference. Is, 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 it's not a laughing matter. It's it's unreal, but anyway, that that that, that I mean, the, the, to give the side, they they thought they could do this block with technology, and it's already been shelved indefinitely. Uh, yep. Two months, it was two months late, and then shelved. So these are the clowns yep. that I grill in a year and epic over over gambling mechanics and loot boxes, and it's embarrassing on both sides. The committee are completely ill prepared. Obviously, have never booted up Fortnite or FIFA in their lives. <laughs> have no fucking idea how things work. I mean, they they start the fucking um, committee session. Talking about, well, you know, Prince, you know, things are obviously serious because Prince Harry, even a member of the royal family, has been commenting on that, on them. Um, and I'm like, what the fuck does Prince Harry know about this? Like, you probably just done a floss dance when you got married or something, and then kind of like linked it to it. <sighs> I, I know that the royal family are figureheads, and I, you know, I'm not anti royal or anything like that, but the, the, you know, in the end of the day, the man doesn't have a fucking clue about these things. It's it's basically man on man in the street has opinion effectively. <laughs> um, you know it does it shouldn't play into it. Uh, it it's, no. it's fucking b bizarre to me no. uh, that that. But that's that was the committee's opening gambit, and then they grilled the grilled EA and um, basically the EA just like avoided any real question. Yeah, they they were it. fucking shilling really hard for EA. It was so bad. I think they referred to. Um, loot boxes being quite ethical and surprise mechanics and they compared it to a kinder egg and yes. i just i just oh my god i face palmed metaphorically so that how was, bad it was um, that was the representative from ea who uh said that surprise yeah. mechanics push it um yeah it's just it's such a bad and false comparison as well and but 
I don't think they got grilled hard enough on it. Um, I, I don't I, think I'm, the committee knew how. I, I honestly don't think that this. Well, is I, the, I mean, the they, they had they had people kind of speaking out against it, um, but it didn't seem to be making as much noise or as much of an impact as you know it should have done. Like for example, uh, I think Reddit's one of their most downvoted comments of all time was somebody trying to defend the loot box mechanics in Star Wars Battlefront Two. Oh just, God, it was yeah. It was that the um, sense of joy? Yeah, pride sense of pride, of pride and accomplishment. And it's well, that same uh, language that was used in the uh, the courtroom defense there. And <laughs> you think, nah, no way. If, if, if anybody knows anything about these things, they just know how slimy and sleazy it is and how much well, it preys on, um, you know, kids, basically. Well, it, it does. It, it does. But, like, this, this, this shit, like, one of the things that comes up in the hearing is that there's a, there's a story of a guy whose nephews came over and managed to spend seven grand on his credit card in on V-Books. Um, and like, it's like, oh, well, if this guy phoned up, would you give him a refund? And Epic were like, yeah, if you could prove that it wasn't him, which the guy could. It, like, uh, it just, it, and it, it, you start getting into weird things like how much onus should be put on the parents to actually parent their children? Because kids can't just go out and get a fucking credit card. No, they can't. I agree. Uh, and there has to, there has to be some, there has to be leadership on both sides. The parents have to be better with the kids. The cat is consoles and games now. You can't just leave your kid with your phone. even your phone. You can't just give your kid a phone. You gotta watch it, man. Not so much what the content they're viewing, but what they could be downloading, what they could be paying for, and things. It's just irresponsible to think otherwise. And the other point is, I suppose, in contrast to that, is is how expensive these things are and how easy it is to buy. It's like a click of a button. I mean, you can set up kind of. It is. Uh, I mean, two-factor authentication, maybe, but not not people who are tech savvy will know how to do that. Even what that means as well. Well, yeah. I mean, kids 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 will get around it as well. I mean, we we used to. Um, but uh, you know, th- there's there's a degree of onus on the parents, I think, and it's easy for me to say as somebody who's not a parent. But you know, there's there's just got to be a degree of onus on the parents to you know, just sit down and fucking talk to your child and explain that this is not fucking monopoly money. Um, it, it has consequences. <laughs> And put and, and look into it and fucking put some controls in in place. Like, give your fucking child a child account on your PlayStation and stuff that that can't authorize payments. Um, yeah, the, the child should never have that easy access to a card to use for payment. Uh, and you um, know, it, 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 it it's easier said than done. And that that's not to defend these games because they are predatory as fuck. And as you see, cash, it's a click of a button. You spend a fiver, click the button again, it's a fiver. I mean, one of the stories that I've got is a guy, um, a guy here and. It's a, this is not even a child in the situation. This is a grown ass man who's older than we are. Um, <laughs> this guy called Michael, um, who <laughs> used the GDPR, he wanted his name for his second name um, kept because it's embarrassing. Um, he used GDPR to basically go to EA and say, I want to know like everything you've got on me. And it turns out he spent um, something like ten thousand dollars within two years on FIFA Ultimate Team. Oh my god, <laughs> that's um, fucking embarrassing. And, and the thing about FIFA, and we we touched on this previously earlier, where we said like it doesn't get the grief other games do, and yet it's one of the worst offenders because like something like um, Apex publishes its, uh, which is another EA game, but it publishes its odds. And um, you know you kind of know what you're getting into, and if it, it's, am I wrong in thinking if there's some kind of guarantee that you'll get a rare after so many loot boxes opened without any success? Um, maybe I haven't looked into it that much. I, I mean, think Apex Legends has that where it out, outright tells you the uh, the odds of what you'll get from purchasing boxes. Yeah, it definitely has that, and like with something like Hearthstone has, um, if you open so many boxes um, without any kind of real success, it will eventually give you a rare card to to make up for it. Um, uh, Overwatch, I think, was quite good in that it used to give you duplicates, but now you'll always get something brand new. And even with um, like Dota Two, um, if you open certain caskets and or casks and um, things, you'll get a unique item each time. You'll never get the same thing twice. So it takes the random element out of it, you just, it's you kind of know roughly what how much you're going to be it, paying for. It, it narrows it down, and it's still you know these things are still somewhat predatory, and the money making schemes and all the rest of it. But FIFA basically has none of these kind of at least halfway house compromises. It is just bad odds hidden behind obscurity. Um, you know, you could spend 
thousands and never get anything worth a shit. And it's it's basically directly compared to something like um, football stickers, obviously a big thing in, in with school kids in this country. Panini, yeah. But the difference is that, you know, stickers you can buy, you can fucking... Um, you can trade. trade, you can sell, you can swap, you can, yeah, you can absolutely do it. So and, much with it. And with the digital thing, there's not many uh, platforms that give you that opportunity. Definitely people what, not. What's worse, though, is you, you'll do it this year, and then fucking next year you've got to do it all over again because you're going to move on to the next one because yep. everybody does. Back to square one, fuck all your receipts. Here we so, go again. They're, 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 it's it's a whole scummy thing, and everyone's got different opinions over what's acceptable in this area, what's not. And the, the trouble is, what I think, I think the kind of core of this argument is, or the core of this whole episode is, some companies are getting greedy with this. I think there's, the, there's probably an acceptable tolerance for this type of stuff. Uh, you know, we'll kind of give some examples of what we've got experience of, and some of them are like, yeah, it's not too bad from a personal point of view. Um, but some co- companies like EA in some instances, quite a lot of instances are, are overly greedy and it's starting to attract the attention of the mainstream media. And that, that obviously... That, that's always going to be the way. They're going to try and push the boat as much as they can. I mean, oh, they are. All, the, the, you know. the trouble is, though, what's going to happen now is we basically games and games companies have not self-regulated. They've, yeah. poked, like, they, they've poked the sleeping lion and what will happen now is... Governments will come in. Governments like these fucking clueless committee members yeah. will, will come in, not really understanding how it works. And just and put in some kind of safeguards and rules and well, pretend it's all for the safety of children and it's yeah, not. It's the porn filter yeah. all over again. I mean, it's kind of already happened in Belgium. I, I can see some wiseness to the decision, but essentially uh, people who play games are missing out in that loot boxes are completely banned in Belgium. So they've had to disable it completely and that means Belgian people, uh, Belgian players occasionally will be missing out on stuff that they might be happy to put down money for. And it's not so much the access to it is a problem, it's just how it's implemented. But yeah, that's that's the other side of the coin at the moment, I guess. So, so yeah, the government's going to come in, sledgehammer to crack a nut, and nobody wins. Companies are making less money. Players can sometimes miss out. On the flip side, you know, we're not, players aren't being exploited as much. Or in that in that way at least it's it's going to be interesting, but I it feels like companies are just getting greedy and and basically bringing in the big guns that don't really understand and don't care to understand, and they'll just go ahead with whatever they feel is is best. Um, yeah. But I mean, there's 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 a video of the whole session that's you know if you're interested in it, it's quite it's quite dry and legal, but it's it's interesting enough. Um, it's 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 just like companies, it's it's like slick corporate people. Well, I say slick. Some of them, some of the guys aren't. Just they're just well, playing the game, aren't they? Really, they're just playing the the dance of. Uh, well, I mean, there's bits legislation where, like, and politics. It's, that's all it is. One of the guys in the committee says something along the lines of like, "Well, how how much does um you know the average player spend on Fortnite?" And the guy basically skirts around it and says, "That's commercially confident information. We're not sharing that with you." And like the government just like kind of go, "Oh, okay, then I'm going to the next question then." Um. Uh, it's just weird, man. Like it, it, it's, 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 it's bullshit. Like it's, it's corporate greed and and clueless governments, and it's not good. Like it's the likes of us that will get caught in the middle and, and miss out one way or the other. Um, yeah. And I, and I, I feel like I'm. It's easy enough for me to say that because I feel like I'm a reasonably responsible adult who doesn't get overly suckered into like the this addictive cycle of buying loot boxes. Like if mm-hmm. I, I have bought, you know, I've bought plenty of fucking loot boxes in my time over the course of like the last five years or whatever, but it's been with this disposable income that I was happy to set, like to spend at the time. It's not, it's not put me out. It's not, you know. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not on the streets on it or anything like that. It's just, it's responsible. Like you say, it's responsible and it's an informed choice, but not everybody can, people can, not everyone can make that. And I don't think there's enough safeguards in place yet to uh, manage that. There's not, but I suppose again, it's a bit fucking rich that the, this particular government is cracking down or starting to look into cracking down on this type of thing, when they made promises to crack down on things like slot machine odds and then delayed that fucking work um, yep. by a number of months. I remember the gambling commission uh, coming in on that as well. Then yeah, so that, and that was quietly postponed before. You know, they made a big announcement: we're cracking down on gambling, we're helping the people, and then it was quietly postponed in the background because you still get a lot of fucking tax money 
that type of stuff. I mean, Matty, you, you probably know better than most what the, those those fucking slot machines are like. That's I'm sorry, yeah, I just realized that makes me say, makes it sound like you're addicted to them, but no, <laughs> I meant that you used to work in an establishment that had a lot of them. Yeah, the regulation has passed through now as the last couple of months, which has limited how much people can spend when using the slot machines in bookies and more. But it, none of that applies to the online section, which is where people are most vulnerable, like online, uh, you know, bookmakers. Yeah. So that's it's a like wild west. step forward, but not really, nothing definitive. It's lip service to the legitimate problem. Um, and, and playing devil's advocate as well, like it, there comes a point where you're like, look, so probably moving away from loot boxes into the wider topic of gambling and, and gambling addiction and things like that. There's nothing wrong, inherently wrong with gambling if you can do yeah. it responsibly. And yeah. At what point do you start penalizing the masses of people who can do it responsible for the few who can't? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a blurry line. It's, it's, I don't think there's anything you can define. And I think that's what's so it, difficult in getting it nailed down and putting something in to uh, help and not hinder. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fucking minefield. And I don't think it's it's up to people as well. Like I mean, I I can appreciate um, gambling in small doses isn't uh, harmful, but I've always been grown up to never do any gambling in what form whatsoever. So I'm I'm kind of safe in that respect. And but other people, this they don't have those ethics employed into them. They don't understand that it's their money and the risk and consequences of not budgeting versus you know um, willingly spending money or taking a big gamble, just try and get yourself out of debt and it's just never going to happen. And also the... Uh... That leads to a larger discussion because, like, you're talking about, like, people being vulnerable. Then it becomes an ethical question of advertising these gambling uh, services. Yeah. But then if you lead them back to games, if video games, microtransactions, uh, loot boxes, sorry, are considered a form of gambling, then where does the line draw with advertising in terms of kids and whatnot, you know? Um, I mean, just think that like this is a massive, massive uh, slippery slope to go down. Oh, I'm sure if a couple more hours on this podcast, we'd have it sorted, definitely. We'll get it. We'll, yeah, man, we'll, we'll, we'll have more progress in the fucking sports, social, and media, <laughs> media whatever the fuck they call. Um, <laughs> hey, at least we've played Fortnite at some point. Yeah, I, I get the distinct impression they can barely spell it in the right way. Yeah, they've probably N I G. Is it, is it, where's the G? Where's the G? Spell it wrong. Yeah, so that that uh, this is this is something I uh, no doubt that will come back around in the future, probably the near future. But it's it's just interesting. It, it's it's weird to see it starting to come out in like governmental committees. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, I think it needs to be looked at. Um, I don't think the right people are looking at it right now. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens. And I think a lot of the power is in the consumer as well. It's just thinking carefully about where you're spending your money. Uh, I, I don't think the consumer's clever enough or responsible enough. A, a consumer is. Consumers as a whole, no, nah, definitely not. Yes. Well, it's like, yeah, was it? Um, God, I don't know why the fuck I thought of this. It's like the, the line from Men in Black where it's like, um, oh, yeah, a, per- people, a person's person like. Person is easy. Yeah, yeah. Really nice, good, you know, kind, compassionate people. People are the fucking worst. Yeah, um, people are, I mean, people are I'm, panicky. Yeah, exactly. I'm paraphrasing massively there, but that's the that's the <laughs> sentiment. Individuals are fine. Groups of people are terrible. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a very light end. I, I mean, I'm I'm out of new stories. That was the last thing I thought it was going to be the biggest topic, so I thought we'd save it the last. Um, but I'm out of news. Um, so do you, uh, you guys want to wrap it up? Or you got anything else you want to add? Uh, that's it. I think I just want to talk about the um, the loot box commission that you talked about as well, uh, and the new consoles, uh, Project Scarlet and the uh, PlayStation Five. Um, interesting. I think they're both going to be around Christmas time next year, so we'll be seeing a lot more. I think Tokyo Game Show will hear a lot more as well, I and definitely we'll kind of a, beginning uh, of next year as well. We'll hear a lot more. I think it'll be like the last re- reveal come February, March next year. We'll we'll get these streamed events that reveal them ready yep. for Christmas. Yeah, um, and, and there's not too much to discuss about them at the moment because everything's kind of open arms a bit. There's yeah, a few in 
a few details bleeding out, but there's nothing substantial. You know they're going to be fast, fast hard drives. <laughs> That's what I'm all about. It's the future. <laughs> the future is next year, apparently. All right, Maddie, about you, you, uh, you got anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much everything. I think E3, like... Oh, he dropped off there. <laughs> Maybe that is uh, the sign that we uh, need a rabbit. Yeah. Sorry, mate, <laughs> you're back. Oh, yeah. So you tailed <laughs> off. Were you, gonna, were you saying something? Oh, no, I was just saying E3 was underwhelming, but there are still some good games coming. Yep. You know. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Then on a better note, then what are your two are you looking forward to between now and let's say this time next year? Mm. Uh, Doom, the new Doom, um, and uh, Breath of the Wild too. Yeah, I think I think it might be a little bit longer, but okay. Uh, mine would be Death Stranding, and probably oh, Cyberpunk. Death Stranding, I guess. Hmm. I don't know what mine would be. Uh, Monster and Iceborne. <laughs> it's more fucking Monster Hunter. Um, hmm. Ah, God, I don't know. Because, like, Cyberpunk's probably the most interesting thing, but I'm still not excited for it. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll go Cyberpunk because it's interesting, but I don't know, maybe I'm maybe I'm too fucking old and sick. I'm surprised, I'm yeah, you didn't say Last of Us 2. The rumours are early next year. Uh the thing is we don't know so i'm not yeah. excited for it but if that does come out yeah that'll that'll easily be it like last of us is still fucking great um so more of that with absolutely better graphics and all the rest of it uh, yeah it would be great so yeah fuck it okay i'll go i'll go with that I'll, you, to to deviate from what you said <laughs> i got last of us 2 and monster and iceborne okay all right let's let's get out of here it's getting late jesus christ it's getting late my um, god <laughs> thanks thanks for listening guys um thank you if you want to get in touch with us you can email us at the pad at plasticmoon.net or you can get us on twitter at plastic moon four um i didn't when i signed up i didn't have the four on it it's put it in afterwards i'm really annoyed about that <laughs> you have but to that, be plastic underscore moon now i'm sure there's no far of them i've set it all up now i'm not doing it again took took, took far too long <laughs> but uh yeah thanks for listening guys and we'll be back soon with more thank you see you then